Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron. I spell my name with an X for the purposes of exposure on the internet, and it is silence. That's why it says bar with an X at the this side of the screen. Welcome back to the bar. In this case, it is the bar Mark II, where there is now a solid wood bar that sits within me, which sits within my new apartment. My new apartment. What am I talking about? I have a fiance. She's not here right now. She's off volunteering at the world at large, and I miss her dearly. Um, but if she were to he if she were to be here, I'm sure she would also be reveling in the joy that it is. She would be able to tell you guys how much how excited I was for today, tonight, because this is the first time that I get to really showcase this beautiful, this beautiful, beautiful thing on stream. It's great. It's it's like a science class. We have a chalkboard. <laughs> It's not a chalkboard, actually. It's actually temporary wallpaper that I purchased from Amazon for a cheaper price than I could get it by the source manufacturer, which feels weird and oddly cheaty, but I did it. And it is a chalkboard. It's not fake. <laughs> here's a smiley face that I just drew with chalk. It's so great. And here's my, um, I, I don't have a good eraser, so, but here's my thing. What's going on, everybody? Dom's in the house. Lorelai's in the house. Annie's in the house. Lorelai said, hello, do not let the horses drink. It's bad enough when the driver, can we imagine even an intoxicated horse loose in the hospital? Technically speaking, now, if, you know, if I'm riding a horse and I'm drunk, is it driving or riding under the influence? Or if I have a horse that is drunk, is that also illegal? I don't know what the laws are. I wonder if there are any here in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I've seen horses on the road before, so I really wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of laws or some sort of set of laws that do govern either intoxication while riding on a horse, intoxication while guiding a horse, or perhaps intoxication of the horse while guiding, riding, parking, steering, or literally whatever else happens. I don't even know. I just subbed and didn't see any of your alerts go off, so you might want to look at those. No way! Well, I actually didn't see anything pop up in the rewards queue, so maybe it's taken a little bit of time to pop up. There is a subscriber there. That is really, really weird. Well, in any case, happy, happy subscriber time. I, I think it's... I don't exactly know how it works, but my assumption is that if you don't share it, like, into the chat, then the alert doesn't go off. However, I'll take your word for it, I did see the number go up, so I have a party head to put on to start things off, and it's a blue one. My absolute favorite color, because I love the color blue. Now, this is going to be a pretty long evening, so at some point, we may run out of real estate on my head for me to actually continue to put party hats on and whatnot, but we're going to try to get creative. You may notice already that there are at least one, two... Party hats hidden in view. Why is one of those drinks a jellyfish? Jellyfish? What are you talking about? There's no jellyfish here. I don't know what there is. Is there a jellyfish? Man of War. Oh, Man of War is the time for jellyfish. Well, we'll get there. If you'd like to stake in toward the, to, toward the end when we actually do some explaining here. Actually, I'll spoil the ending. You don't have to stick around if you don't want to. The Man of War is apparently also a famous horse, which I found out when attempting to find different horse cocktails. What I was attempting to do, it was actually, so here's the story of how this particular cocktail list you have a list of cocktails. We will be covering all three of these this evening because as opposed to we used the way that we used to be doing things before, it used to be cocktail into game. We used to do a cocktail, make a cocktail, take that cocktail with us to a video game to the other side of the bar, and um, we would drink the cocktail while um, playing the game. I, I don't really want to do that anymore. I feel like it doesn't give enough time in my opinion, to be able to focus on what I believe to be is half of this channel's intent, which is exploration, uh, the means to be able to take something that I feel people kind of hold in a very negative light and bring it to something that feels positive at the very least, as a means to, to calm down, as a means to share with the world. It's, and in general, this it doesn't have to just be uh, alcohol either. For all I know, this particular segment here can be whatever we want it to be. If I can manage to set up a proper camera angle in my kitchen, I would absolutely attempt to try my hand at baking. Now, I'm really, really good at in following instructions on the box, but I'm, uh, other than that, if I can find an instruction set online, I'm also pretty good at following that as well. Um, but uh, honestly, put that to the test against like an Iron Chef. I don't know exactly what you'd find. This feels neat. We have a full Kelpie Knight, the horse that would submerge any fools who decide tried to ride them, but had a particular dislike for livers. Interesting. Like like chicken livers and stuff, or like actual human livers. To the point where if you had a liver, you could not ride this horse, which I'm sure is not how I'd imagine. I don't believe a horse can like perceive the lack or presence of a human liver, but maybe like chicken livers and stuff in their food, that doesn't seem super beyond me. And what if they spiked the liver? I have no idea. But that's a question for the law, not the question that we are here to answer tonight, because I am not a judge. I did take one law class though, and it was mostly on co contract law. So like, if you need someone to read through a contract for you, and sort of kind of make sense to it or try to dumb it down, I could be your man. 
but I'm mostly going to be your engineer because that's what I studied and electrical engineering is what I do. Kelpies would drown big victims and eat everything except their livers. That's super metal. Literally, nature is net metal. An excellent subreddit. So, without further ado, I would like to kick things off. The two for the first kick things off, excuse me for my stutter there, is this bar. Um, this is the new bar. You can't see all of it, so I'm just going to zoom out very slightly to see the entire... This is, this is what we got going on here. Is uh, There's various things happening outside of you and whatnot. This is my bar. This bar does not have a name yet. I plan on naming the bar and potentially carving my name on the inside, or at least writing it with Sharpie. Um, the story of how I got this bar was um, looking on FreeCycle, which is a site, I don't know if it's present in other parts of the world, but it is here in the America, at the very least. And in the America, we have like different areas of the site for different areas that you would either want to give things up for free or, um, or I guess take things or um, take things for free. And one of the things that we were looking for, specifically me, sorry for my weird zoom there. I, I, I don't have a good view of the, of the preview I have. Although if I put my spectacles on, I can see rather clearly that I don't see a line anymore. Actually, I kind of do. This is, this is a work in progress. Everything is a work in progress. Dom says, all right, sounds bad, but we've, I've been up since 1 a.m. today, so I'm ready to pass out and sleep. Nah, it's all good, dude. Take a rest. If you're a working man and you've been up till it's 1 a.m., you deserve to sleep. I hope the drink goes as planned. I hope all three of them go as planned. And if all else fails, this will be able to live on for the world to see for the rest of eternity because I put things on YouTube for archival purposes, which is apparently not what YouTube tells you you should be using its server for, but uh, whatever. So we got the bar from FreeCycle. And we picked it up, me and Anna only. This is a very, very heavy bar. This does not, it takes at least two people to be able to move. And we went to this lovely woman's house who was giving this away because it just wasn't of use anymore. It used to be used as like a TV entertainment center, I think. Uh, it's got like drawers on the front that you can open and whatnot. Yeah, it's got shot glasses in one. We've got Madeira wine in the other and various other compartments down there if you might have caught. Very, all of my cocktail spirits are stored within this bar, which is awesome because now I can go down and do like this and pick up literally anything behind here as opposed to having to go to my kitchen, which is now downstairs um, to be able to get whatever ingredients and reagents we may have for meat on standby. Now, when we got this, it took the combined mental and physical effort of Anna and I to be able to get this bar out of this woman's garage and into my parents' car, which is a lot bigger than my own car, and managed to just barely fit the length of this bar, the side facing me downward, and I guess this side facing the front of the car, if you can imagine that orientation in your head. It required us to kind of steal a wooden plank that this woman had on standby, just kind of sitting in her garage, because we were like, the only way we we're going to get this up is if we put it onto a piece of wood and push it up into my parents' car. And we did, just barely, manage to get it to my parents' house, where we managed to do it the reverse way around. I put it in my parents' garage because I was like, my apartment, the old one, cannot fit this thing, and I'm not lugging it up two flights of stairs. So we're like, fine, we'll prepare it for when we get to the new apartment. Did get to the new apartment. About about a week or so, maybe two weeks into like the moving process to get to here, which Anna and I did not hire a moving company. They were way too freaking expensive. So we decided on our own to take a single dolly, which I stole from my university. One of the best, one of the best acquisitions I've ever made in my life to be able to very slowly box by box, bit by bit, piece of furniture item by piece of furniture item to this new apartment, which is about two blocks up the road, which doesn't feel like a lot until you've done at least a dozen trips in one day, round trip, and you're like, oh, I could really use a cocktail right now. The problem is I couldn't make the cocktail. I mean, I could make the cocktail. I brought all my liquor over here first. I wasn't gonna leave that unattended in my old apartment, but I didn't have a bar to make it on. But eventually we did coerce my fiance's father to take my fiance's older brother's pickup truck which he was able to get it into the car with the help of her sister to the city. And then she and I was working home that day. She was home that day. And we decided to, we managed to get it down the road, up into here, flip it up a certain angle, flop it into the apartment, and like very carefully scooch it into place. There used to be a glass pane down there before, and it did not break, although I did recycle it later on. MK Bryce is in here. I'm telling Howard you took his dolly. I didn't take Howard's Dolly. I took Drexel University's Dolly. Dare I say, I went to, da metaphorically speaking, went to Daddy Fry himself and said, please, I've paid for this enough, haven't I? And I 
told, I, I, I took it. I just took it right then and there. And I think I deserve this, honestly. But the amount of tuition that I still owe, actually, I don't owe Drexel anything. I owe the U.S. government things, which apparently might be changing because of these laws that Biden's passing or whatever about, like, student, like, forgiveness, I guess? I don't know. I'm looking forward to that. That's okay. Then I do deserve it. You're damn right I do. Drexel's Dolly feels cursed. It is somewhere, I, I don't actually exactly know where it is right now, otherwise I would go for it. It's either in that closet, downstairs somewhere, or somewhere else entirely. What's wonderful is that because of the size of this apartment, it's not in plain sight. I can hide things so well and hide things in a way that it's not just hidden underneath something. It's in a completely different space that is totally dedicated to tool storage or food storage or to house my 3D printer so that it doesn't make a lot of noise because the bedroom's on the opposite side of the downstairs level where the printer is on the top stairs level to the other side so it doesn't make enough noise to wake up Anna in the middle of the night or me as I sit there trying to go to sleep attempting to meditate to the sound of the rough humming and whizzing and mechanical sounds of a printer going at three o'clock in the morning because I didn't time my prints correctly, which can happen and has happened in the old apartment. And I have tested the thing out here and it works pretty well. In any case, that's the story of this bar. And I love her, him, them, I don't really know. This bar has yet to tell me a gender, so I'm gonna have to ex assume, I don't know. Whatever you deserve, whatever you choose to, or whatever I choose to. I'm the master here, I guess. But I don't have a name for it yet, so for now, it is just the bar, spelled like that, the X is silent, no further questions, your honor. Let's get things started. So, as I was flipping through my cocktail books, I just kind of came across, I was just trying to look for something that I could make, and I have a lot of different reagents back here, and so it wasn't that difficult to find something, but I really wanted to find a particular cocktail that could inspire other cocktails. I figured this is the first night back and we've got this beautiful new bar to play with, it can't just have one cocktail, and depending on how things go going forward, maybe we'll keep on doing this. I honestly don't know, we're just, uh, I got a lot of, my motivation's like up here today, my excitement is up here today, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it from three down to two down to one, where the one is normally like a seven on the enthusiasm scale. So like, if this is seven and this is like nine, maybe this is an 11 and we gotta bring it down from there. Otherwise I will not last the night. And chances are, as each drink continues and continues, um, I may, for one reason or another, reduce the amount of excitement I have here, reduce the volume that I have because alcohol is a depressant and it will do that to your body if you drink enough of it. And if you drink too much, well, we try to avoid that at all costs. But so, so I was flipping through um, one of my books, which is a very, very small one that I think I found. I didn't find this one on the side of the road. I think I found this like, like a thrift store. It was a very, very bright pink book. And somewhere on the inside, it say, it mentioned a cocktail called the Thoroughbred Cooler. And I was like, this seems really interesting. I don't know what a Thoroughbred Cooler is. The first thing I thought was, is a Thoroughbred, like a purebred, like a dog maybe? And as it turns out, a Thoroughbred is a particular type of horse or at least a way to describe a horse, according to the internet. I don't know if it's Merriam-Webster or anything, not, anything other than that. It's just Google. Of a horse, an adjective, of pure breed, especially of a breed originating from English mares and Arab stallions and widely used as racehorses. And so I thought to myself, okay, if a thoroughbred is a horse, maybe we can find other horse cocktails out there. And I immediately thought to myself, it's a, I guess it's a representation of where my mind is on any particular basis. I thought horse, horse tranquilizer, tranquilizer. I wonder if there's a cocktail out there called the tranquilizer. And apparently there is. And it's either inspired by something called T-Town, T-T-O-W-N, or The Queen's Gambit, which I believe is a Netflix original series, probably started as a book somewhere. It's about chess and stuff. I've never watched it. I want to watch it now because apparently they mentioned a cocktail on that. And to be honest, if a if there's a particular source that says a cocktail was either created for or influenced by a particular piece of media, I want to experience that media because, um, I don't know, it tickles it, it tickles my preferences, it tickles my fancy, so to speak. And if there's a particular recipe out there that has an origin, I want to know about it. Uh, but I did not make I did not make the tranquilizer because I feel like it wouldn't be right to go into that without having seen the show. So as, as soon after I completely binge Queen's Gambit, maybe then we'll do an episode on the tranquilizer. But until then, I had to get my mind going in a different direction. Horses. Horses, I thought. What else do we have that's horse-related? The horse itself. The horse's neck. Apparently, it's a classic cocktail, from what I can tell. I have history on that. We'll read it in a bit when we get to it. Um, named so because of the way that you prepared the drink. We'll get there, too. Or at least we'll try to. I am a novice at best, and if I manage to fall short of expectations, 
this is what you should expect. If you expected a, you, if you expected a pro, you came to the wrong place. I am rather young in this world and drink as a hobby, I suppose. In any case, and then along those lines, I was like, well, we have two cocktails. We might as well go for the trifecta. And I was like, what? There, there, there must be horses out there that have names, either cocktails named after them or horses that were named after cocktails. And apparently, the man of war is a famous horse. I don't know if it was a racehorse. I'm guessing it was a war horse. But apparently, there is also a jellyfish named that too. So we're kind of taking this whole like animal relevancy to another level. If you can even consider jellyfish animals... I don't think they are. are. They fish? Are they something else? I don't know. I am no biologist, nor am I a marine biologist, and you should ask somebody else or Google it yourself. Or we can Google it right here if everyone's really that curious, but I don't know. In any case, let's continue with things. The first cocktail on our list today is going to be the horse's neck, which I'm pulling from a cocktail book in my collection called 1001 Cocktails. It is by Paragon Publishing, I think. There's a little there's a P on it. There's a P right on the spine. And uh, when you pee on the spine, that means Paragon Publishing. There, there's your slogan. When you pee on a spine, that's Paragon Publishing. And the cocktail on this is the horse's neck, which I have conveniently covered with a post-it note for some reason. The horse's neck being a name inspired by, uh, I suppose, the hairs on a horse's neck, which are very, very long. If you notice, the horse's neck is very, very long, and the hairs that come off of it are also naturally long because of the nature of a horse's neck. Um, and so to garnish this cocktail, you make a really, really long lemon spiral that you use with a channeling knife, and you drop it into the cocktail glass and cover it with ice so it anchors itself there, and then... Um, and then you build a cocktail on top of it, inspired by the horse's neck. A long neck, a long face. Why the long face? Be happy, we're smiling today. Lil Abe says, Man of War is a super famous racehorse. Great horse cocktails. I'm so glad that my random, pa actually I was going through the list of famous horses and I was like, is this a cocktail? No. Is this a cocktail? No. And I think Man of War was like number three, so I really lucked out there and it happened to be in one of my cocktail books. The one that my mother gave me. I'm very happy to be able to use, I like that. In any case, the horse's neck, as described by whoever wrote Paragon Publishing's 1001 Cocktail, says, This refreshing drink can also be made with gin or with bourbon. Adding a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters, the same name is also used for a brandy and champagne pick-me-up. I don't have champagne, or at least not champagne that I'm willing to spend on a cocktail like this, so I'm not taking that route. I actually found this recipe as well in another one of my books, and it gave a slightly different recipe only mentioning bourbon, and so because that was the one that I first found, I decided to go for the bourbon route. So it's gonna have in it one ounce of bourbon and then filled all the way to the top with dry ginger ale. The driest ginger ale that I could get access to was um, Seagram's as it's been sitting in my apartment as a part of my um, my mixer selection for quite a while now. So that's what we get. If there's a drier ginger ale out there, I, I can't figure out one off the top of my head. So if you happen to know a really dry ginger ale, I would appreciate any sort of recommendation so that if the dry ginger ale ingredient comes back again someday, I will be well informed if I remember, which I hope to because I do have a notebook on standby and a pencil. The notebook is still in there. I did not drop it in back to the floor. So the first thing that we're going to do, it says to drop the lemon peel spiral into a tall glass and anchor it with ice cubes. I am going to go and get a tall glass, conveniently placed right outside of the field of view of the camera, which is great. It is so convenient to have space to move around and actually do things on. An additional irony of the thoroughbred cooler, according to Lorelai, is thoroughbreds are often used as racehorses because they are hot-blooded, agile, high energy, high speeds, as opposed to cold-blooded draft horses. Which, uh, I guess that's pretty good. I mean, I gotta think, like, if you... I would think, from a very layman's point of view and assumption, that purebred stallion, purebred horse, would be, I guess, more able to do things, like, run a race, than a not purebred horse. But then again, like, I don't know. That's not how, like, metal alloys work. I'm a lot, I'm a lot more familiar with material science and stuff. But, like... Iron is not super strong, but steel is, and steel's got a bunch of carbon impurities in it. So technically, steel is not a purebred metal. So in that way, maybe that throws that whole like solution like completely out of the bag. But alas, that's not that's I don't I don't know. Let's not get into metal right now. I don't want to be putting metal into my body unless it comes as a part of a balanced breakfast in a bowl of I don't know, Fruit Loops or something. 
So we have our tall glass here, and the next thing we're going to need is a, as long a lemon spiral as I can muster. So I went to the store today thinking, I don't have that knife. I don't know what that knife is, but I know it can cut a really, really thin line of citrus off of a citrus peel. I didn't know what it was called for the life of me. So I had to reach out to the helpline that was my coworkers, and we found out that it's either called like a canal knife or a, a channeling knife which was great. So I went to the nearest convenience store, which was giant, and looked for a channeling knife. Could not find one. I went to Target, and there was no channeling knife there either. I just kind of picked up the most channel-like knife that I can figure like figure out, and that was like this oddly shaped peeler. I figure if I use it like this, then perhaps I will be able to get like a channel out of it. Um, and I came back, and I was a little disappointed that I could have found it. But lo and behold, my mother actually gave me another set of things when I first told her that I really wanted to do bartending stuff because you used to be a bartender and it was a set of equipment. There was a, let's see, actually, it's right over here. It's a strain, little strainer, little bar spoon, little double-sided cup jigger thing, and um, a small little butter knife that looks like you can spread things with. And there was also, lo and behold, this, it's like, it's a can opener but it's also a bottle opener, but it's also a channeling knife. And so, thanks mom, I appreciate you being in my life for giving me these things, and I completely forgot that it was there because I didn't find a use for it until this very moment, the day that Bar Mark II with a silent X comes to the scene. I'm so thankful for that, it's wonderful. Lorelai also says that both thoroughbred and draft horses can be purebreds. They are very different types, like a poodle versus a husky. Clydesdales are a popularly known breed of draft horse, for instance. A neat tool indeed. The the the, um, the Clydesdale that is. Clydesdale for some reason sounds familiar, but I don't know too much about horses. I haven't thought about horses for nine to ten years, for particular reasons that. That was just middle school. I haven't thought about horses since middle school. I went horseback riding in middle school like once, and it was it was good. Apparently, I was one of the good riders, despite the fact having absolutely no experience at all. So we're gonna take this channeling knife, which to be honest is more of a multi-tool and not built that well because like it looks like if you if you cut the wrong way then you're just gonna slice your finger open because this is a very very sharp point here so if you're dealing with sharp objects please make sure to have some protection. I say that now but did not prepare for it. I have goggles and I suppose a second hand but let's be careful there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a lemon and we're just gonna try to get a channel through it. A very very long thin strand of channelness. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in a bit to see when we have a nice view of the lemon. And I'm going to try, like, as best as I can to, like, like do this in the view of the lemon. Just try to see what's going on here. I don't know if it'll work. And if it doesn't, my sincerest apologies. I, I, I try my best here. So I'm going to take the channeling part. There's a little, like, there's a little latch there. There's a little latch. And I was under the assumption that you should take the sticker off your lemon first honestly yeah let's let's do that let's take the sticker off the lemon and put it in a little trash bin i have over here i'll clean it up later take go to this side camera the hook of your channeling knife and you're going to without attempting to use the bottle opener if you can kind of like wedge that into the lemon i'm gonna do it from the bottom i guess so y'all can see what's going on here or at least try to as best as i can so like just kind of like push it in there it's gonna be a little messy because um because i'm I'm releasing all the oils from the lemon. Okay. Well, it seems that if you've done things correctly, which I assume I have, you will get it right on in there and maybe take up a little bit of your zest. It smells wonderful over here, by the way. It's just, it's a beautiful smell and things are going to get real sticky after this. In any case, once you have your channeling knife in there, just kind of like I found when I was practicing this, you can just turn, you can just like turn the fruit or, or not. That didn't work. Um, turn the fruit and add a little bit of force. Yeah, that's working. I, aside from practicing right before stream started, have not tried this before. That is off camera. I'm trying my best. Okay. Ooh, nice. I'm trying to get a, gonna try to get this as long as I possibly can. I've found so far that if I kind of like try to peel tangentially to the lemon, that it works. Okay. That was not very good. Not very good. It was um not a very good peel. But I have plenty of lemon left, so I'm gonna try it again. And now that I have a channel for myself, I'm gonna go back at it again. Let's try one more time. Zoodle that lemon. I actually do have a zoodler in my possession. It's not upstairs, it's somewhere downstairs. Um, yeah. I did zoodle a watermelon before, that was pretty cool. All right, my, my thing is kind of like going into the bottle opener. I'm trying, trying here. This might take a little bit of, okay. Um, it was small again, and it's kind of stuck. 
observe, observe. This is this is this is the side of the screen that I will be trying to present to. It uh, it is difficult to get used to, but I'm sure with practice we'll make perfect. Do not actually zoodle this lemon. We'll try not to. Um, all right, let's try it again. I'm trying to get something that's really long here, and if I can do that, great. Um, I realize that I don't have a means to like clean my hands easily, aside from like a uh, a Brita filter here with some water in it. So like um, my hands are sticky. And I'm trying real hard. Like, I'm putting a lot of force into this, and I really don't want to cut my finger. And I did it again. Oh, my God. All right. Well, you got the gist of exactly how that's supposed to work. And I'm going to keep on trying while we kind of vamp here for a little bit. But that didn't work as well as I planned it would be. So eventually, out the other side, I'm hoping that we wind up having a zoodle... Not zoodled. Um, what do you call it? Duh. Duh. Channel. Channeled lemon peel. Me, the channeler needs to practice his craft. I do. I'm not channeling goodness. I'm not channeling energy very well. I'm certainly not channeling lemon. Very good. Um, honestly, I'm an amateur at this. We're not, we might not actually get the long stranded lemon peel out the other side. And if we don't, that is totally okay. I accept failure when failure looks me in the face. And so we will take as many of our small peels as possible and put that into the cocktail as a means to emulate a single horse's hair, which instead we're kind of taking all like, imagine we just gave the horse a haircut um, and we're, uh, we gave the horse a haircut and we just decided to um, take the pieces of hair that we cut off and put them back together. I'm gonna do this at this angle here. This might actually be a little better for my technique. Nope, it was actually so, so much worse it seems. All magics take time, no shame. No shame in practice. My Spanish teacher once said, practica, 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 which she told us meant practice makes perfect, which I'm pretty sure actually meant practice, 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 although I do not speak Spanish. So um, I'm not a good source of truth on that. I'm trying to channel this lemon again. I need to get in. It's tough to get that. It's, it's tough to pierce the skin, you know? Tough to pierce the skin of the lemon. Actually, you kind of, if you push in the bottle opener part and then like scoop upwards with the channeling part, it looks pretty well. No, I, I was wrong about that. Didn't actually work. All right, continuing to attempt the channeling. Channeling of energy. My hand is so sticky. I need to take my rings off for a moment. This is not voting well. You're correct. The Spanish teacher was just saying practice, 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 practice. If I can even speak my English well, I'd be able to portray a point pretty good, too. Um, man, I am really struggling with this. Let's try it again. I am gonna try two more valid attempts at this, and then I'm just gonna accept, I'm just gonna accept the fact that I'm very bad at shaving a horse, it seems. I don't know what the technique is for this, and I'm just trying not to hurt myself. I feel like I'm just supposed to, like, turn the lemon, but it's very tough to do this. This is technically the right tool for the job, but, um... It's also technically not, and I don't plan on spending all of my effort. I did it again. Jeez. I don't plan on expending all of my effort to do this, but if I can at least get one, just one good one, I'll be happy. This one was a good start. I'm just gonna, nope, that didn't work either. You know what? I will channel positivity in place of channeling lemon. Um, this lemon is beautiful. You are beautiful. These peels are beautiful. And my goodness, doesn't this look like the best horse haircut you've ever seen? Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you for confirming that. Much appreciated, audience. Thank you, audience. Thank you, audience. Audience is up here now. I continue to forget that. In any case, we must accept our failures in life. It's all right. If we don't accept our failures, they will surely define us. And I don't want to be defined by my failures. I want to be defined by the way that I surpass my failures and move beyond and learn something, which is what I'm attempting to do here today. Do, please excuse me one moment as I like. My hands are sticky, so I'm going to take this little brush of mine. A brush. A little towel. I'm going to moisten it up just a tad. Just kind of get my hands wet down. It's great. I have water on standby. I have a towel on standby. It's so nice to have space to move around. Now this is my wet towel, and I hopefully will not accidentally put that on my chalkboard because I've tried that before and it just doesn't work. So I'm gonna put it on top of my water filter there. That should work out fine. Gonna give this drink a punky ponytail. I'll try to at least. In any case, back to the cocktail. In this cocktail, we need to build the horse's hair on top of it. This is the this is a tall glass. It's not the tall gla tallest glass I have. And now, in hindsight, I realize that by not choosing a taller glass, I've actually worked things out pretty well for myself because this is about almost the size of the glass. So um, we got a short hair horse. I don't know if there are short hairs out there. There must be. This is a short hair horse. If there are any famous short hair horse out there, this is it. No more will I try to 
perpetuate myself with those silly rhymes and syllables and whatnot. In any case, we're gonna need to put ice in this. It tells me that I'm supposed to it. The cocktail book instructs me to place the peeled lemons, the channeled lemons as best as we could, inside the glass and anchor them down with ice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place in one hair, gonna add like an ice cube or two, place in another hair, and then the second hair, because I don't think this is, I don't think this is a three hairs tall glass. I could have used something taller. I chose not to. I like the way this glass looks. And we're using a highball glass for the next cocktail. So I just, I, I didn't want two things. I had a choice here. So that was the choice I made. So let's get some tiny, get some tiny ice cubes here. Um, not the tiniest ice cubes I have. I'm actually going to take the most oblong shaped ice cube I have, ice cubes I have, which are those little, um, they're Disney shaped ice cubes. There's like, there's like a Mickey balloon in there. There's a bow tie. There's a pair of pants. It's beautiful. Donald's hat. An acorn, for some reason. I don't know how acorns are related to Disney. And of course, Cinderella's Castle. So, um, thank you, Disney, um, for this alcoholic horse experience. Family-friendly in all the best ways. Truly a show for mom, dad, and all parents alike. I got two glad two whoa, I got two ices in there. Two ice things. I'm gonna place another piece of horse hair in there and put Donald's cap on it and could very, very skillfully push things to the bottom. I'll put another piece of ice in there lose my channel guy and then um i'm gonna kind of do it that way get more ice more ice get cinderella's castle cinderella's castle put it in there there we go that looks um acceptable i suppose yeah that's that's no oh, i've lost them wait i gotta get my tweezer one in there there you go come on out come on out buddy there we go i'm a i'm a cocktail surgeon wait i lost it I'm gonna be wide, I'm gonna be wind up. Actually, I'm not gonna pour things just yet. Actually, I should have mixed things up before I did this. Hold on. I will fix this after we actually mix up the ingredients. So I'm gonna put this in my cooler with the rest of the ice so that we don't lose it because it's nice looking. I like that. Nice ice. Nice chilled glass for this experience. Put it in there. Put the rest of my ice in there. And we will fix things after this short break. Just kidding. No breaks. There's no time for breaks. There's drinks to be made. Lorelai says this glass has a nice fancy vibe, like they just ran at, they just run one of them at classy races. It feels snooty. It's like I'm drinking champagne. Well, this drink is supposed to have champagne in it, at least in one iteration. So, um, in that way, I think we're getting pretty close. That was me throwing my channeling knife, which I hope not to use again anytime soon, into my little waste bin, because I have one. Because I have space to move around. Look at how much space I have. This is awesome. I love it. Truly fitting of a man wearing a party hat behind a very clearly adult setup here. I may be legally an adult, but I'm a child at heart. That's what my young one of my young cousins told me the other day. He was like, how old are you? I was like, I'm 24. He's like, you act like you're 15. I was like, that's a compliment. I take that. I take that happily. So getting back to the actual cocktail itself, the horse's neck require... Oh, wait a minute. We don't need a shaker for this. What am I talking about? I completely got caught up in the whole, the whole uh, mix of it all. We actually built it in the glass. Silly me. If I were to look at my notes, I would have known that. In any case, completely ignore all the rambling that I just did. And um, imagine that we um, we just kind of zoop, back it up a little bit. I have my ice back. We have our cocktail back. I am going to zoom in on the cocktail glass so we can get a look at, see what's going on here. A little bit closer, I suppose. I don't have a means to, oh, I don't have anything that puts this cocktail up into view. That's pretty good looking though. Wait, I know where the yoga blocks are. They are on the table. This has been the one thing I've forgotten all stream so far. I'm honestly gonna take that as a win. Eventually I wanna get risers. There is a better way to do this and I am working on it. There we go. There we go. That feels pretty nice. I kinda like that. In any case, so the horse's neck uses a single measure of either brandy or gin or bourbon. I found the bourbon recipe first, so I'm going to use bourbon. The bourbon that I have is of no particular blend. It sits in a funny decanter because I have literally no idea what it is. So, I'm gonna take an ounce of it. And I'm gonna pour it in my glass here. So, let's do it. Single ounce of somebody's bourbon. Whose bourbon? Nobody knows, honestly. Just a single, single ounce of that. And I hopefully don't pour things all over my bar. But even if I do pour it all over my bar, it's okay. I have a little, I have a little bar protector here. Having a hard time pouring from this, my goodness. Pour it. That was pretty good. And because it's not that tall a glass, it looks like this is gonna be half bourbon and half ginger ale, and I am all for it. This is amused. 
and I'm, I'm into it. I'm totally into that. Um, and then we're going to fill it up with ginger ale, the driest ginger ale you have. I have Seagram's. That's the ginger ale that I have. And um, I guess it's, compared to Canada Dry, I guess it's dry, which feels kind of topsy-turvy because you'd think Canada Dry is the dry ginger ale, but it doesn't matter. It's my bourbon. Cameron's bourbon. My bourbon. That's what it is. Let's crack it open. That is such a satisfying sound. I don't know about y'all, but I love the sound of that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to kind of pick the horse hair out. It's kind of disgusting. I'm manicuring the horse. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to pour... Oh, no. Let me put another ice cube. I'm going to get another ice cube on the ready. I'm going to try to pour... I'm going to try to pull that hair out. Come on. Come on. I really should have longer tweezers. And then, like, pop you into the side. Hey, it's sticking out the top. I would call that a win. Honestly, it's a little, like, it's a little... Something not horse related, but it's little and I like it and I appreciate it. Anyway, after you're done adding your one ounce of bourbon to your horse's hair, add ginger ale, dry ginger ale, all the way to the top. And if your horse hair is still sticking up, then it's a good omen that you're going to win the horse races. Yes! It totally worked! It's still there, just, just a smidge. It's just, just a smidge of a win. I named this horse... Stallion with an X because that feels appropriate. I'm gonna put my ginger ale to the side. And this is the horse's neck. Top off with ginger ale. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's how it do. Thank you, everybody, for coming along and checking it out. Hairstylist in the house. Only if your hair is made of citrus peels am I a good hairstylist. Um, but but any other any other stuff than that, um, not exactly right. Gonna win by a hair, literally by a hair, or um, a lemon, pe a channeled lemon peel. Um, partially channeled, I suppose. It honestly doesn't get much better than this. No, it don't. So, this is our horse's hair. And if you'll excuse me for just a moment to be able to take a picture of this, I like to take pictures of my cocktails. We, um, we try to... It's all about remembering the good stuff. And this feels like the good stuff. From my angle, it says groom. So I'm going to turn that around just a little bit, just so I can get a little... Right in the light. It looks kind of pretty. Excuse me. Um, obligatory Instagram time. This will be happening three times this evening. I think it looks pretty good. Click, click, Mwah. it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Even the ginger ale had horses. Sorry if I missed you making that goof. Oh, it's great. Oh my God, it did it? Did it have horses? Ginger ale has horses? Oh my God, there's, <laughs> there's literally a horse on the can. I did not do that on purpose. That's awesome. I love learning new things about things that I do because I'm not observant enough to observe it myself. This is wonderful. This is so cool. I did not plan that at all. It's wonderful. In any case, now presenting the horse's neck. Not called the hair of a horse or winning by a hair of anything related like that, which includes one ounce or 30 milliliters of bourbon or gin or brandy. One book says to use brandy. One book says to use bourbon. It's whatever you like. And the other one says you could also add an optional dash of Angostura bitters, which I am going to add a little bit at the end, but after I taste and see how things are here. 10 out of 10. Intention, unreally, unneeded. When I poured it, the horse faced the drink. Dude, awesome. We love chance cinematography. Horse's hair. Ladies, gentlemen, and those who fall in between and beyond. I'm honestly not thinking that that's something that I would drink. Actually, you know what? This kind of tastes like... It's giving me, it's giving me bar vibes. It's giving me like... I just walked up to the horse race bar and I was like, yo, whiskey on the rocks. And they gave me whiskey on the rocks, but the rocks had definitely been sitting there for way too long at this point. Probably because somebody came by, drunkenly ordered it, walked away, and the bartender, not a very good bartender, decided, well, there's a perfectly good man, um, bourbon on the rocks sitting there. I'll give it to this guy over here. And that's what he did. I would never do that. I wouldn't do that. I also wouldn't spider my glasses either if I was serving to you, but I'm serving to me and, you know... I can do whatever I want. This is my bar. This is my bar. I can do whatever I want. But like, if you're into something, at least the way that I mixed it here, it is, does have a sweetness to it. It's not totally bourbon, but the bourbon is super duper prevalent there. Honestly, with this particular ratio in my glass, it's probably about half bourbon and half ginger ale, and my ginger ale is kind of on the sweet side. So the taste of this drink is probably going to be something a little, I would guess, Probably the same amount of sweetness if I use something drier in the ginger ale side and 
less ratio wise on the bourbon maybe in this case instead of using like an ounce or 30 milliliters of bourbon i'd use like maybe half an ounce perhaps but there is a lot of ice in there so i don't think there's much else that i can do to the ratio to kind of like improve upon it aside from just use a different glass and follow the directions again but this time from the beginning also i definitely could have done better with actually channeling that horse hair there the lemon peel in this case um but i tried something new today i did practice a little bit beforehand but you know it's it's not necessarily about it's like when you do things live it's like when speed runs happen live or like right when people are watching that's when the either the greats shine above the, the not so greats or the not so greats make some of themselves perfectly obvious and i'm a not so great but i'm but i'm happy about it and that's okay because everybody has a means to learn and that's where i'm at right now if there is a learning curve do some math here i guess what's the cocktail learning curve i don't know i'm not even gonna try the cocktail learning curve is this and i'm like like somewhere here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's all right. Anyway, I'm gonna erase that. Nice tri nice rectangle wave, dude. You study complex analysis and stuff? No, this is, this is all right. I would say that if I received this at a bar, or if I received, if I received this at a bar, I'd be like, okay, it's very, it's very bourbon strong and I'm okay with that because this is definitely something that tastes like something that I actually have had at a bar before. Although it definitely wasn't called the horse's neck. It might've been like, I'm trying to think like, I may have had whiskey sours that taste like this, which is not on the sour side. And it definitely didn't have any sort of like smoothing egg white in it. I have had things like that before, like cheap bars, or just kind of tastes like well whiskey and like generic sour mix, I think is probably what I would consider it a likened to. The horse's hair, the, ha <laughs> the horse's hair, the horse's neck, everybody. This is the horse's neck, and it is long, and its face is long. Well, it doesn't really have much of a face at this point, unless you consider the hairs to be whiskers. Looking all right. It's looking pretty good. In any case, let me grab my coaster over here, and we'll move on. This was cocktail number one of the evening, which was called The Horse's Neck. Thank you, 1001, Par 1001 Cocktails by Paragon Publishing for allowing us to indulge in this particular beverage. I'm going to leave it there for now. If I go back to it and drink from it, Maybe I will, but in the meantime, I think I'll stick with my water. I think I, I think I prefer the water at this point, which is fine. That's totally okay. If you're the kind of person who doesn't enjoy alcohol, don't force yourself to do that. Unless you're like, you're trying to accomplish something. Like if your goal is to perhaps increase your tolerance or kind of like it more for the sake of like, let's say like going out and partying and whatnot, then you do you. But make sure to do things safely. If you don't do things safely, just, just go out with a friend. If, if you don't do things safely, at least you've got somebody to fall back on and somebody to keep make sure that remind you to keep safe or to force you to be safe. Usually when the last time I went out and got really, really drunk, I had my fiance with me and a very close friend of mine. Me and the close friend were drinking. My fiance, Anna, did not. She had like, I think a single drink and she was good for the rest of the night. And she very, she very safely got all of us home, despite the fact that I was very much not in the state to get home without being walked there. And like, if you're gonna go out and party, in my opinion, that's the way that you should. You shouldn't go out and like, like wake up like in a dumpster because your friend just your friends just decided to ditch you, or you went out alone. I don't know. I mean, not everybody can, not everybody can go without. Or not everybody can go with a team or with a person there to hold on to. But um, at least at least you can try. I feel like if somebody approached me at a bar and said, "Dude, I can't go. I can't go home. I can't go home. I'm so drunk." I'd be like, "All right." Well, if I'm not drunk myself, I will try to walk you there at the very least, see where our paths intersect. That's what I would try to do. Although, drunk me is a different person than sober me, and sober me is the one streaming right now, unless I chug that thing, which I don't plan to. That's not really what I have in mind here. In any case, that was the horse's neck, a cocktail that I just kind of, like, found. So, so we did that. I don't know whether, for the purposes of, like, like, progression and stuff, I don't know if I should, like, cross it off the list or whatever. Actually, let me see. Can I? I can put like a rating there. Let's put a rating there. Why not? What did I think of the horse's neck? It's something that I, I wouldn't intentionally order this at a bar, but if I received it at a bar, I would, I would drink it. I most definitely would. I would take this. And if somebody asked me, Hey, wh what do you think of it? I'd be like, it's all right. So I'm going to call it. Let me think. If zero is like disgusting, five is like, it's like, it's all right. But like, I have no preference to it either. Or I'd probably call this like a 6.5. Yeah, let's do that. 6.5. Let's do our rating scale. X out of 10. Yeah, I'm into that. That's the rating. It's all right. 
and it's orange, which I didn't do on here. Let me, for the sake of color, for the sake of color coordination, that's white at the top because it's a label, and this is like 6.5, and it's like, it's all right. Certainly not in the green zone. This is kind of cool. Never done cocktail ratings before, but um, you know, there's a first time for everything. It was my first time channeling my inner horse. Nay. And then uh, that thing. Yeah, 6.5, at least the way that I made it. I'm sure it can be made better. Can you bring it up to a 10? Probably. I, I don't put myself in high regard in that case, but I'm trying here. The next tail cocktail on the list is the Thoroughbred Cooler. We were talking before about Thoroughbred Horses, and as it turns out, the... Oh, actually, we did read the... We read the definition of a Thoroughbred Horse. Thoroughbred Horses. They're purebred, particularly originating from the English mares and Arab stallions. I don't know a thing about horses, and I'm not going to pretend like I do, but I read that off of Google, and I know that... I know that more now than I did before. Now, the other part of this is the thoroughbred cooler, and I need to double check this, but I think I remember when I looked up thoroughbred cooler, it described a cooling coat that goes onto the horse to keep them, like, cool. So the thoroughbred cooler is like the, uh, keep your horses comfortable with a horse cooler to help him dry off after a workout and prevent the chill, according to horse, horse coolers, doversaddlery.com. Saddler, saddlery, like a saddlery. Saddlery or Saddlery? It sounds awesome. It definitely portrays what I think it would be. If somebody said Saddlery or Saddlery, I'd be like, like a horse's saddle? But yeah, you put that on your horse to cool them off, apparently. So the Thoroughbred Cooler is what you would put onto your your precious, precious racehorse. Your precious racehorse is so hot, he's been working out all day. Put a cooler on him. Put a cooler on him. This is the cooler that we put on him. Apparently, it is a cocktail that I found out of this beautifully pink book that I found. Oh, you know what I just remembered? One second, one second. Before we move on, this is the pretty pink book that I'm talking about. The, before we move on from the horse's neck, you can supposedly add Angostura bitters to this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit of Angostura bitters to there and see if it tastes any better. It's not a required part of the recipe. It literally says you could add this if you are, um, if you, like if you did it with bourbon, I think. So here we go, one. And a couple drips. Yeah, that feels good to me. It's like a dash, I think. A dash is what we call for there. Lorelai says, there are terms for the horse blankies? Yes. And I feel like it doesn't function as much as a blankie. More like a... You ever, you ever use one of those frog togs? It's like a horse tog, I think. It's not necessarily... It's not like a blankie. Blankie, I mean, a blankie to me warms. That's what I think of. Maybe it is a blankie, but like a cooling blankie. That seems about right to me. But now... Now that I have some Angostura in there, I'm gonna kind of agitate a little bit. Let's agitate with my trident. Agitate. I'm agitating the horse. I'm poking the horse. Say, come on, change your flavor. Change your hair color. The hair color did change a little bit. Like the scarf you soak. Ah, yeah, 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 that's the, that's the thing. That's what I'm thinking about. Like the frog tog, it's like a scarf that you soak in water and just like, it evaporates, so it makes you cool. I shouldn't be surprised, says Lorelai. I'm aware that they have bonnets that just go on the horse's ears. That's so cute. Anyway, horse's neck. Does it taste better with Angostura? Smells better with Angostura. A little cinnamony. Mildly. It tastes mildly better. There's a bit more of a... I taste slash sense the carbonation a bit more. So I'm going to kick that up to like a... I do like it better that way. I do. So with Angostura, we're going to kick it up to a... 6.9. Hey, yo, got him. Nice. Okay. And then we'll move on to the next cocktail. Finally. Ah, horse is going to kick us for that. They definitely are. If I had a horse nearby to kick me, I would... <laughs> I wouldn't provoke him to do so. If I had a horse nearby, I'd provoke him to kick me on streams so that everybody can see me suffering. No, I wouldn't. Although, if I did get kicked by a horse on stream because of something that I wrought upon myself, not on purpose, then I guess that would be kind of funny. It's a... Uh... I tend to enjoy that type of comedy. I think people getting, people people like hitting things and like rhythm to songs and stuff. Not necessarily with drums, but like their body parts. It's kind of funny. Like uh, when people like, there's a there's a video out there. It's like, it's a hard knock life, but there's at least one of like somebody hitting a door. There's one, somebody hitting a stop sign. Um, it's hilarious. That kind of, that like gets me in a comedy gland that I'm not fully aware has a name, honestly. Horses, ki horse kicks are brutal. I mean, if you've got a piece of steel on your foot and you whack somebody, you're probably going to do a bit of damage, if I had to guess. In any case, next cocktail on the list for this evening. 
the thoroughbred cooler. Imagine you have a thoroughbred horse, right? Your horse is hot, right? You put a cooler on them, right? Maybe you call it a blanket, right? Soak it in a little bit of water on a hot day, right? Wrong. Just kidding. It's right. It's a thoroughbred cooler. And I found it in this pink book here called Girls' Night. Over 1,000 Drinks for Going Out, Staying In, and Having Fun by Jacqueline Wilson Folly. These are a couple, I've had a couple of recipes from this book before. It claims to have over 1,000 cocktails here, and I'll share you the secret. It's because a lot of the recipes in this book are just kind of the same recipe, but just like repeated with a different spirit. For example, I wonder if I can just turn to one. Um, like there's an entire three page section about Chambord drinks, which are more than likely drinks that were mentioned previously in the book, but now you have black raspberry liqueur in it. I think it's black raspberry, right? That's what Chambord is? I think it's black raspberry. Where's my Chambord? There's my Chambord. Chambord's right here. What is this? I gotta check myself. Product of France. The product of France. Chambord, drink responsibly. Black raspberry. I think that's what I said the first time. And if it wasn't, I have been swiftly corrected. In any case, what we're into, what we're into is horses. Specifically, purebred, thoroughbred stallions. And this thoroughbred cooler uses bourbon, just like the other ones. There's a theme going on around here. It seems that the horse-related drinks all use bourbon. Why? I'm honestly not so sure. I don't really know. There might be so Actually, let me... I have the world of the internet in front of me. Let's Google it. Horses and bourbon. I'm going to be put on the list. The word internet is going to think that I want to feed bourbon to my horses. Feed. Experience Kentucky, Kentucky's rich past and vibrant present. Excuse me. In the bourbon horses and history region. Oh, so like Kentucky, like the Kentucky Derby? Is the Kentucky Derby about horses? Because if that's the case, wait. Kentucky Derby horses. Yes, that's it. That's why they all had bourbon. So the reason why, at least what I am now assuming to be because of a very minimal amount of evidence and a very small sample size, so it's technically 90% of the evidence there, is that these are all using bourbon, or at least bourbon as an option, because Kentucky bourbon, the Kentucky, uh, the Kentucky Derby, with horses. It makes sense. Horses, Kentucky Derby, just a match made in heaven. And that's why all this stuff does de bourbon, which is great. There's our cla classy horse race. Absolutely. And the Chambord is absolutely the holy hand grenade bottle. I don't think I overlooked that. You're absolutely right. So a thor thoroughbred cooler uses one ounce of bourbon. Specifically, it says Knob Creek. I, I have my mystery bourbon here. Actually, what kind of bourbons do I have? I know I have more than just that one bourbon. I have, I have another type of bourbon. I'm actually going to use a different type of bourbon this time because... I would think, right, if we have a thoroughbred horse, a purebred horse, why would I be using a draft bourbon blend? Why wouldn't I not use something that's pure? And it's not from Kentucky, it's actually from Savannah, Georgia, but we'll take that out in a moment. I like that idea. Great idea, Cameron. Nice job, Cameron. High five. Awesome. Yo, mom's in chat, which means we have to do a party horn, but my party horns are all over there. I'm gonna go out and wait for my mother. As always, I have, oh, I'm going. I'm all the way over here. Hi, everybody. It's me, on the other side of the camera. Here's for all the mothers in the class. In the class? In the crowd? This isn't, we're not, we're not schooling today. Unless, dude, I should get a tall, I should get a meter stick that I can whack on the board. There is no neighbors over here, just a hallway, so nobody will be disturbed. I love you, Mom. <laughs> By the way, thank you for providing for me, um... This thing! I found a channeler in my collection, and it's all thanks to you. Much love and much support to the mothers in the crowd, especially... That one. Love you, Mom. In any case, back to the talk of purebred stallions. Nice. Why would I be using a not... not... why would I use a blend? Use a pure one. We're moving on now. I already said that joke. It doesn't matter anymore. We also need an ounce of orange juice, which, oh my god, lo and behold, I have an orange here that I was practicing my channeling on, and it went a lot better, mind you that. This, this channeling attempt went a lot better than the other one uh, with the lemon. And we're going to use some fresh orange juice. I've seen a lot everywhere, especially on TikTok. Um, I would consider that there is definitely a subset of the cocktail mixology community of purists and elitists who decide to gatekeep from other people. 
Naturally, if you have access to fresh ingredients, then I think you should be using them whenever you can, but not everybody has access to fresh ingredients. Maybe the store is way too far away and you can't drive. Perhaps the organic price that you should be using is double the price of the inorganic price, and this is all you can afford at that time. Whatever you mix, if you put it in the glass and you like it, in my opinion, there is nobody out there who should judge you and say you have bad taste, because I feel like and from purpose personal experience it's not like i've been on this earth very long but it seems that there's way too many people out there who are just like oh you didn't use the right bourbon for that you didn't use rye whiskey in that manhattan of yours oh disgusting and i just i don't like that mentality like who gives a shit if i use a different type of bourbon or whiskey like why does it matter to you i like it fuck you seriously that's my that's my um that's my place on this. But I do have access to an orange today, and I bought the inorganic brand because I wasn't planning on using the, the, the peel here. I think that's how that worked. There's like a list out there of like the dirty 20 like fruits or something like that. And essentially the idea is that if it's not organic, there's no real effect on you because the part of it that matters because of like the lack of like bug spray and natural pesticides and stuff isn't what you're putting in your body. Like for example, this is not organic. And I, I believe in the whole organic thing. Like I, I think there's some, there's gotta be some credibility there. I don't wanna ingest microplastics and pesticides in my body. So if you're gonna use something from, let's say, if you're gonna use the peel from the orange, try to get something that has, you know, give it a wash first, obviously, then a lack of pesticides on the outside because you're putting that in your body. You're getting it in the air. The juices come out. And I feel like that's what you want to do. Um, but I went for this because I'm going for the juice, and I think the juice is relatively unaffected. And that there's science that completely like just like goes against me. Um, I'm curious to read about that. Honestly, I'm a man of science, so if there's something that points in the other direction, I want to read about it. Lorelai says meter stick, lab coat, and optional glasses. I do have the glasses. Maybe the lemon was part of the issue that last practice. I think so. I think this orange is peel it's outside is a lot thicker than the lemon and so um i think so like there's less i can see the white i actually dug into like the juicy parts of the lemon um and i think that might have been contributed to how hard it was to channel in any case we have the ounce or 30 mils of bourbon we have an ounce or 30 mils of orange juice if you can get it fresh great if you can't that's fine i have orange juice in my fridge downstairs and if i didn't go to the store today i'd be using that because honestly would it make a difference in the taste Absolutely. Does it matter? No. If I like it, it's great. And we also need a dash of Rose's Grenadine, but I'm not going to use Rose's Grenadine. I think that stuff is kind of crap. So I made my own Grenadine a while ago. Let's not ask when. And I'm going to use that in the cocktail. And we're also going to use lemon lime soda. I've got Sprite, so that's what we're going for. Lorelai also says, yes, especially when the folks using a not name brand are also trying something from a smaller business or one they tried to make themselves and they want to see if it works as cocktails too. Absolutely. If you're somebody out there who uses literally a carboy in your closet with, to bake like mead and stuff like that, you don't need to use like that Nordic brand or anything that's like from a particular part of the world. You got your own mead, you got your own bourbon, you got your own beer that you want to use in place of a cocktail, do it because that means the cocktail is yours and that kind of unique part of it just, it's a good feeling. It feels like a good feeling to me. I don't know. I feel like I get very passionate about that stuff. Not just because I had one bad experience online, which obviously being a millennial Gen Zer completely defines my entire personality because I am that influential. Sure I am. Sure I am. So let's go for it. I'm gonna throw our bread cooler. All right, I'm gonna kind of pop this below my little thing here so I have it on reference. I hope that's, that's probably not weird. No, it's not weird at all. In any case, the thoroughbred cooler, the instructions please, pour all ingredients over ice in a highball glass. Fill with lemon lime soda and stir. Add a dash of grenadine, garnish with an orange wedge. I have oranges, I have wedges, or I can make wedges, and I do have the closest thing that I have to a highball glass, which is this tall and cylindrical shaped glass that, yes, I had conveniently off camera because I can do that now. Honestly, you have, you have no idea. I can't, I can't reach the camera from here. But there's an entire just stack of glasses over here on tables. They're not stacked on top of each other. And it is just, I love it. I'm so happy for it. I'm so proud of it. Just let me be happy for it. This is, I love this. I feel so comfortable back here. The fact that I have my comfort zone, which is my desk right there, which probably has some problems associated. I don't know why I'm so comforted at my desk, which I do work and play at. Mm. And the fact that I have back here too, and serve out cocktails for guests. Great, I'm so happy about that. Horse drinks avoid being avoiding being shaken. Nothing worse than why when they get spooked. An excellent observation, which it's no secret, but I know the next cocktail is shaken. So for the most part, yes, except when it comes to a famous horse like the Man of War, which I guess if it's engaged in battle is very much shaken. Dare you could say has would never not be shaken. I don't know. I don't really know. 
But yes, let's do that. Pour over ice in a highball glass. I have really tall ice cubes here, really thick ice cubes that I'm gonna place inside of this glass and that's what I'm gonna do. Jellyfish follow no rules. You're right, they don't. They just kind of stick on your leg and they're just like, ah! And then you scream, ah, because, ow, oh, jellyfish stings, they hurt. They do, I've been just stung by jellyfish before. In any case, what else we got going on here? Wonderful, wonderful things. Um, I need some ice. So I'm gonna try to see if my thick, thick boys will fit in here. We'll try. We'll try, we'll try, we'll try. All right, these are my thick boys. Thick boy ice cubes. Uh, will they fit on the inside? Maybe. This cocktail is built. You don't even need a shaker. Not being shaken. Not stirred. Does this fit? Oh, it is so close. Oh, it is so close to fitting. It is so close. Come on. Come on, you got it. Yeah, you got it. That's not a good idea. Don't tap on the glass. Bad idea, Cameron. Instead, um, I don't have like an ice chisel. So instead, what I'm going to do is attempt to shave this ice cube. I don't like this. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a cloth to hold this. It might be a little dirty and it might have a, you know what, no, I have cheesecloth. I'm gonna use cheesecloth. I'm not gonna use the chalk covered one. Cause like, I want better grip on this and I really, really don't wanna cut myself. Remember, cut away from yourself um, and use protection. This at least gives me better grip. I'm gonna try to like, kind of shave it off a little bit. Something, something that allow me to have space in my glass. Do it on a couple sides. I didn't think this was gonna happen, but uh, it it fits almost so well. I'm like, I can't not try, right? Can't not try. Gotta try it at least. I'll do it another side. I think this will probably be good. I'm gonna have to do this for a couple more um, ice cubes. So maybe I should have prepared this in ahead of time, but I didn't, so deal with it. Oh, oh, it totally worked. I'm gonna do another one. Here we go, it's right behind. That was great. That was so great. Don't knock over the glass, Cameron. Not a good idea. Did this one work? That one works basically right out of it. Okay, actually, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna put another ice on the top if it works. And um, as we prepare the other ingredients, they will sink into the glass. That is so close to totally being in there. Let's try it again. There we go. Why such gigantic ice cubes? It's a metaphor. Come on, don't do that, Cameron. I literally told myself, don't do that, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I'm foolish and my attention span doesn't go farther than like a couple seconds or so. Maybe it's because I'm young and that's just my generation. Maybe it is, or maybe it isn't. Honestly, who knows? I'm young and I know it. That will break the glass. Yeah, if I keep tapping it, which I'm not trying to do. Silly. I knew that. Awesome. That is beautiful. I mean, this is as close to an ice spear as I'm going to get. So uh, I'll take that. I'll absolutely take that. I'm gonna put my ice away. I don't think that I'll be needing any more for this particular cocktail. And put that to the side. All right, now where do we find ourselves? We find ourselves at the point where we need to add an ounce of bourbon, but we also need orange juice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to prepare the orange juice first. It's not gonna go bad in the time span that I have it. So let's do that. I have a cutting board, I have a knife, I have an orange. Put two and three together. I don't know how many, I don't know how many counts that was. Um, and you got orange juice. And I'm trying to get the sticker off my, there we go. Got the sticker off my fingers. We're good. And I also need an orange juicer. I have an orange juicer. Another wonderful thing about having a bar, the wonderful thing about all wooden bars is the fact that it doesn't, it doesn't shake when I do things on it. I mean, if I shake it real good, like it will shake. But like the act of me just like, cutting into an orange is not gonna put my cocktails at risk. And I love that. It's so easy to do when I don't have to worry about glasses falling off the table. Although this floor has been christened. I have broken a glass on it and it was like a, it was the only other highball glass that I had. It was a little smaller and it had like the word love written all over it and like magenta colors. And I love that thing, but it's broken and um, hopefully completely sucked up. It happened like three weeks ago, we're fine. I wish I could share with you the smell of orange in this room. Smells great. Here, smell that. Put it right up to the microphone, just so you can smell it. It's good. Put it right up to chat. Smell that. Smell that, chat. That's, that's beautiful. Mom says, finally, a video with the bar. Dad. I know, right? Hi, Dad. For all the dads in the audience, um, I threw my party horn over there, so I am going to make percussive noise, because that's what a good son does. Kind of sounded like a cowbell, and if I take my hand off of it, the timbre changes. I love you, Dad. I love you, parents. 
I really like it when people support this stuff. It's really nice. If y'all have parents out there, if they suck, you don't need them. But if they're awesome, like my parents are, keep them in your life. Love them. Love you guys. Heart. In any case, let's move forward. Your son is drinking alcohol. So let's do that. Let's take, I need about an ounce of orange juice, but honestly, I like orange juice. It's okay to have a little bit more, a little bit of extra and surplus. Surplus, according to my American history class and social studies once upon a time, was the reason why certain civilizations could grow beyond their means, grow in size, the tendrils of civilization branching out all over the world because of surplus. Thanks, Mesopotamia. Thanks, abundance. Thanks to harvest fertility gods. You're awesome if you exist, which if you don't believe in, cool. I, I don't really believe in, but like, who knows really? I don't know anything beyond just these three dimensions. Let's juice it. Let's juice it. Juice it. In a shape. I don't know the other lyrics of the song, but gosh, this is so satisfying to do because I don't have to worry about things falling over anymore. It's great. This has been, how long have I doing the bar, the, the X bar, bar, bar with an X? How long have I doing this for? I don't know, I don't really care. It's been a fun, however long it was. It's wonderful. And how are we going? How are we doing? How are we doing on time? About an hour? Sweet. Cocktail hour, the single hour may be over, but happy hour extends for at least the next hour because we're not even halfway through our cocktails. So you're welcome, everybody. And if you're not having a good time, just leave. The door's open. If you don't like it, nobody's forcing you to stay here. But if you are liking it, thank you. And if you have feedback, also thank you. If not, and you're just kind of hanging there, just like sitting back in your chair and being like, what's this guy doing? That's fine too. I'm not your parents. I can't tell you to do anything. And the fact that you are here is something that I very much appreciate. Any case, one half of the orange is gone. I can throw it in my little bin because I have a bin. It's wonderful. This whole being able to do things that I previously couldn't do and had to deal with for a couple of months is not going to end anytime soon. And so I will not apologize for me being really excited about this because honestly, like, I, I don't know, have any of you ever built a bar of your own if you're really into cocktails and stuff? Like. Isn't this a great feeling? I didn't build it, but like I put it together and I had a fun time like dealing with my lights. My lights can do pretty crazy things, speaking of which, um, this is me showing off because I'm really happy about it and it feels really, really good. But check this shit out. We can change the color to blue. I can also make it totally blinding. That, that was the way it was before. We can make it super duper blue, which is awesome. And I can also do this shit, which I think, I don't know, this is just a cool color scheme. Tonight on the bar with an X. Oddly colored cocktails in oddly colored light, so you can't tell. In any case, I turned things off so my camera can adjust. I can also turn the lights completely off. That was the wrong, that was the wrong color, silly. Turn the lights off. And back on again. Right? There we go. I don't know what happened there. The bulbs I use are L-I-F-X. And um, they work for the most part. Um, so, you know. If you like recommendations, there's a recommendation for you. Dead orange half into the bucket. I don't need you. You do not serve me anymore. Go in there. You do not manifest the positivity for me. I found out today, I, I don't use the word manifest very much, but apparently it's a generational thing. Like people saying manifest positive vibes, manifest good things and they will come to you is apparently a very generational thing. And lo and behold, I am a member of my generation and I loud and proud, baby. I'm happy about that. So you have orange juice. I'm gonna put this off to the side. I think I may need the cutting board later. And I have definitely an ounce of orange juice on standby. And I flipped to the grocery of my book. But no worries, I have, actually I have my notes over here. What am I doing? Bourbon, orange juice, and a dash of grenadine. We need some grenadine as well. But let's do it. Pour it all over ice, lemon lime soda, stir, and then add the grenadine right up on top. I guess in this case, the horse itself is supposed to be the lemon lime soda, which is Sprite, the bourbon and the orange juice, and then I guess the cooler is the grenadine that goes up on top. I would think you would do something a little more ice related, but whatever. Please excuse me all for just a moment. I have to refill up my water cup. Um, I'm gonna do that. We have to take time to hydrate. If we don't take time to hydrate, we'll surely dehydrate. Not my words, somebody else's, but my goodness, I love them. Did you consume today? I did, I did. And honestly, this has been sitting for a little while. How does the horse's neck taste now? Still just as watery as it did before. I don't know, there's just something like, it's very, that 6.9 goes back down to a 6.5, honestly. It's like, it's, it's, it's eh, it's kinda eh, but whatever. In any case, we need bourbon, we need orange juice, and we need 
lemon lime soda and then grenadine. I don't know why it put it in the opposite order. The, that's another thing I've noticed about particular cocktail books. When I originally took, I took a single like bartending like path of courses. I never completed them. They're here in Philadelphia. If anybody's interested, Aqua Vitae, V-I-T-A-E, it's a pretty good guy. Ori runs it. Ori's a pretty good guy. Um, I never actually finished it. But in that class, one of the things that I learned was that if you see it in a cocktail book and a guide, you build it in the order that it is mentioned there. For example, that's important for like layered shots and whatnot. If you don't put it in the right order, the densities don't work out and you don't get that really cool visual effect. That that is not that's definitely a guideline, and some people follow it, and some people don't, because some of these books make no sense at all. It makes absolutely no sense, especially. And you'd think my shooter book doesn't provide them in the correct order. It'll be like, oh, put your heaviest ingredient on top, and then put it on the bottom. And I was like, oh man, is it supposed to create this like falling effect? Like, no, you just put it in wrong. And there is a piece of I saw a piece of hair come out of my drink. Probably my own hair. It's the horse's hair. Nasty little something to put in your potions to keep you perky, I suppose, if, if that even works. I'm, I'm down with it. Down with that. Okay. And there's also like, we, we have a, we have a small fruit fly problem here. Every so once in a while they pop in there. Full disclosure. I, I don't know what's, I don't know, I don't know why. I got probably gonna ask my landlord about them. They come from my drains, they come from my fireplace, we have fly traps, but, but you know what? It's all right. We're slowly but surely getting our shit together here. Um, bourbon. We need bourbon. I'm gonna go with this bourbon. So, the thoroughbred cooler relates to bourbon as it does to the Kentucky, Kentucky Der Derby. Kentucky is very well known for their bourbon and stuff. This is a single baron, Founders Reserve, official bourbon of River Street. It is Savannah brand, single baron, aged five plus years. And uh, when I went down to Savannah on my family vacation, I went to the liquor store. And I had one thing in mind. I was like, I want to buy something from Georgia. And I was like, what do you guys, what, what's the best thing that you guys have? And they're like, well, I mean, we're known for our bourbon here. And I was like, I'll take it. And I spent 70 bucks on it. And honestly, worth it. It's a pretty good bourbon. I tried it. I tried it while I was hanging on vacation with my family. That was the one stream we did before the hiatus started. And uh, it was good. It was very good. So we need an ounce of that or about uh, 30 milliliters if you work in, in my opinion, like the, the, um, the Uber measurement system. I also need my, my grenadine. Let me take out my grenadine as well and close my cooler so things don't melt. And my grenadine too. Uh, and my lemon lime soda. So I'll take out my Sprite. And I will, um, I will not poke my eye on the, I almost poked my eye on this thing. Jeez, that would have been weird on stream. Could you imagine? Local streaming moron pokes himself in the eye. Ow, painful. I was actually just trying out some contacts the other day because I found them at home. My parents helped me with that. And um, it's definitely not my prescription anymore. I need, there are different glasses, a different prescription. I need an updated one, but I haven't been to the eye doctor in a while, so that's fine, I guess. One day I'll do it. Um, where's my yoga block? My yoga block's on the ground. Let's zoom in so we can build this cocktail for realsies. Let me go do it a little bit. Let's see when we got the right size. Zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. You might catch some of the fruit flies hanging around here. I apologize about that. It's all right. Don't apologize for great content. I will never apologize for great content. What are you talking about? Beautiful content. Here we go. Let's put her there. That feels all right. I could probably put another yoga block there, but um, we'll, we'll work on this. Next time you come home, you should go. Well, I guess I should. <laughs> I'll try my best parental units. One ounce of bourbon. Single barrel. Founders Reserve. Age five plus years. We like that. Put it over here so we can see the pour. Yes. Pour over top of the thing so it catches it and catches the light. Yes, that's how we designed it. One ounce of the bourbon. Spill a little bit, that's fine. Do whatever you want to. We also need a single ounce of orange juice. If you have orange juice that you made fresh, wonderful. If not, that's also wonderful. You do you, man. You do you. I have some that we got fresh. So I'm gonna pour what I'm trying to be about an ounce in there. I hope I have an ounce. If not, I need to juice more orange. Come on, come on, come on. You got it. You got it, Orange. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. That's an ounce of orange juice. We did it. Oh, and it's pouring all over my bar. That's fine. We make a mess here. That's what I plan for. I plan for things that make messes because messes are unavoidable. And that's why I have this little towel here so I can clean things up. It's great. I love it. I'm going to put that away. I don't need that. I will take out an orange, though, to present the ingredients that we tried, that we, uh, that we used in this cocktail. Okie dokie. The next ingredient we need is filling up all the way to the top with lemon lime soda. 
Hear that? Sprite. It's the closest lemon lime soda I have, and honestly, I love it. Go up there, fill it to mostly the top. It looks pretty good. How's it looking from your angle? Nice. Like that. All right. Put that spray away. It no longer serves me. Off in that direction. I can't see your head. Yeah, you can. You're supposed to be looking at the cocktail, silly. Mmm, Sprite. Very creepy. Shuten Tatsu. Shuten Tatsu? Shuten Tatsu? Shut and Tatsu. Shuten. Shuten Satsu. I'm having a hard time pronouncing that. My sincerest apologies. Correct me if you will. It's very creepy. Yeah, it is. Is it the fact that, like, you can see my face pores and whatnot? Does that really drive that point home? If so, that's fine. Let me put that get to the side. Torso cam. It's me, the one with the torsos. I put this to the side. And now that I have that in there, I need a dash of grenadine, it seems. Only, only a dash. Hmm. What do I want to do first? Honestly, let's put the dash in there. A little dash. I don't know exactly how much dash we have, but this is the dash and we're going for it. Here, it's a dash. It goes right up on top of the ice cube and hangs up there. A little bit. Does it, does it hang? Nah, it totally falls. That's fine. The sprite is not creepy. We can't see your head. That's why it's creepy. I know it's creepy. I'm okay with that. It's fine. It's fine. That's got a nice little color scheme to it. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm gonna zoom out because apparently uh, the creep the creep factor is getting a little much here. Do you not like the dog? You don't like the dog? What's wrong with the dog? The dog says I have no idea what I'm doing. It's cute, mom. Come on. It's so cute. Tell me that's not cute. It's like a sunset. But how does it taste? I don't know. I'm not gonna taste the cocktail until I properly garnish it. I need an orange wedge for that. So um, let's do an orange wedge. I hope I zoomed that out correctly. And with that, I will take a sacrificial orange, place it on top of the sacrificial stand, and I will grab it. Here you are. You're hanging on the side. Hello, sacrificial orange. Um, what's something you say when you sacrifice something? Um, does it hurt when I do it like this? Yeah, that's a great thing to say during a sacrifice. Um, I'm going to take the non-sticker side, put it over there. All right. Orange wedge. This is a rather large orange. I'm cool with that. Love the shirt. Thank you so much. I'm glad that the shirt was not the thing that was like, like, putting you off. It's great. I'm gonna put these oranges to the side here. Let's put, let's put the book over here. Let's put this stuff over here. And now we have a, now we have an orange wedge. Let's put that on top. I'm just gonna like, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on here. Wow, that is kind of full. I am going to try as best as I can to put it right smack on top. Accept this gift, my lord, my savior. I offer this to the Dark Prince. I love that. I offer this to the Dark Prince. And the Dark Prince wears a smile. That's what you used to do when you were younger and you put oranges in your mouth. I am going to try to... E. I'm going to put a little, a little slit in there. There we go. Tiny little slit. Just enough to sit in the glass. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. I'm trying, I'm trying. It's not gonna overflow because that would be silly. Never. In any case, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I love that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are we cool now? Like, Lord, are we Are we cool now? Does the sacrifice like do it for you? Thanks, Lord, appreciate it. This cocktail used um, bourbon, grenadine, orange juice, and stuff. I'm taking this off. I'm losing, I'm losing the space. I'm losing the space that I thought I once had. Put the oranges um, away, way. Away. Over there, there. Great. Put things away. Perfect now. The question now is, what does it taste like? How does it look? I'm going to take my obligatory Instagram photo because that's what we do around here. At least that's what I want to do. It looks pretty good. Wow, that is very bombastic. I post these on my Instagram and edit them considerably because that's the kind of gent I am. If you like that stuff, click the follow button or don't. I don't care. Shodantastic says, he has desecrated the orange, banish him. Man, a green garnish would have made it pop more. It, it would kind of, but this is, this is what the instructions tell me, dude. And my mint plant, all my green stuff is over in that corner and I could run to get it. Um, but honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't do it for me today, you know? It doesn't do it for me. But I'd still drink it without reservations. Oh, absolutely. And I will without reservations. This was the Thoroughbred Cooler. 
that one. And it was made with a single ounce or 30 milliliters of bourbon, a single ounce or 30 milliliters of orange juice. Fill that up all the way with lemon lime soda. I used Sprite. And then add a dash of grenadine, which doesn't float on the top. It falls to the bottom. What that says about this whole horse metaphor, I don't know. Maybe the horse is dead. I don't know. And we're drinking it? Wow, that's quite the sacrifice. Green like what a horse eats? Yes. Like the green orange. The green orange. The lime. Actually, the lime garnish would have been good there. Let's do it anyway, right? We can do whatever we want here. This is my bar. To share. I'm going to put a little lemon thing on that. I wonder if there's a drink called Sea Biscuit. Well, if there isn't, I see a glowing opportunity. There we go. Add a little... Try not to cut tears yourself, Cameron. Don't do it. There we go. Now we got... Let me... Ah, come on. Get in there. Come on, Bobby. Come on. Bah. Ah, it's not staying. Ah, it's kind of staying. If I turn that carefully, you know, we're gonna add a straw to that. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna add a straw to that. Excuse me, ladies and or gentlemen. I'll get myself a straw. They're over here somewhere. Straw. Straw, I say. Straw. There we go. Now I can drink that properly without destroying anything. I drink a drink topper. That's just one of those meme horse ma meme horse masks that make the super that it makes it super tiny. Yeah, like the little horse heads that you can put on your finger and be like, meh, meh, meh. So, that does it for me. The thoroughbred cooler. It also has grenadine. Don't know if I mentioned that or not. Let's go for it. How does it taste? My, my, like, my, I can't word today. I'm still drunk. The drink, the straw is at the bottom. That's where all the grenadine is. I don't want that taste. So let's try for it. That's delightful. Wow, that's really, really good. I'm gonna try to agitate some of that grenadine and taste a little bit of that in there because I'm not get, I'm not getting too much of it. Wow, that's lovely. That's really, really tasty. I really like that. So what I'm getting right off the bat is there is a beautiful sweetness being made by the fresh orange juice and the grenadine when you agitate it up a little bit. It's a wonderful flavor there. I don't think I get anything that's like, forwardly pomegranate which is what i made the grenadine with it's with pomegranate molasses and pomegranate juice and a couple other things and a little bit of orange blossom water i still have that in my fridge now but it's really really good i like how sweet it is and you also get the bourbon there is still the bite of bourbon just like i just like i'm getting over with this guy here but it's it's good it's very very nice i really really like that that's good it's got like a i should say more things than good it is not sour Despite the fact that there is like, um, the, the, I find the grenadine can be a tad bit sour just the way that I made it. And the orange juices can sometimes be a bit tangy. It's really, really sweet. It's very, very tasty. And honestly, I, I realize now it's probably coming from the path, the path, the fact that half of this is Sprite. So it's, of course it's going to taste good. Why wouldn't it? Honestly. And so that's what I, that's what I think. That's my conclusion. It tastes really good because the Sprite, which is lemon-lime, mixes well with the orange, which is also citrus, which mixes well with the uh, the grenadine, which is pomegranate, which can be tart, can be sweet, depends on the palm that you're punching. I don't know, alliteration. It's great. I think it looks pretty as well. I like that. The man keeps agitating horses. I still do. Terrible idea. When all drinks are done, mix them all together, like call that a derby? Hmm. If somebody can remind me of that when we get to the end, I will do that. But if I forget, and then we won't. Uh, wait, 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 I have a, hmm. Wait, wait, I can, I can prepare for this. Derby, question mark? Please excuse the chalk sounds. I'm planning on getting other markers. The, the derby, which combines all of the, I did that curly brace the wrong way. Uh, yes. The derby which will combine all of the drinks together at the very end of the stream. So if you're into that kind of weirdness, stick around to the end. I'll do that. Nice. Oh no, not jungle juice. Not derby jungle juice. Goodness gracious. Awful concoction and fun memories. Oh, absolutely. Dude, I... <laughs> the memories I have of like my fraternity house. Jungle juice, man. The recipe changed over time. And honestly, I think I prefer the old recipe more, but that's a trade secret. We don't share those kinds of things, but it was pretty good. Ah, but how good is this? Well, the fact that I just sipped, dude, I just sipped up an entire, like, glob of grenadine there. It is, it's beautiful. It is a, it is a great thing. Honestly, no matter how you try to drink this, 
it's good. If, if you're a little towards the top, you get more of the carbonation from the Sprite. If you're toward the bottom, you get more of that, like, th that more fruity mixture, which is very prominently the grenadine, because there's a pool of grenadine at the bottom, a pool of blood, maybe. Or maybe it's just, like, the rain falling off of the racehorse as they're cooling themselves. No, no, no. Maybe it's the sweat of the horse that have fallen because the horse is hot. That's why you put the cooler on top of them. Either way, it's a disgusting analogy, and I don't like where this is going. The recipe equals whatever alcohol you had left and dumped into a large bowl. Understood. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. How would I rate this? I love this. So this is getting the this is getting the green chalk. It's getting the green chalk. I would say I do like it. However, there's not a lot going on. Aside from the fact that depending on the level of the straw, you can change the flavor of the drink. That's kind of cool. Looks kind of cool, but it's not a very crazy garnish. It's not super complex, and it's more or less a one, it's a one flavor drink. Depend, like, I should have something that kind of changes over time, or something that I can like really piece out the flavors from, and I really can't here. If that's important to you, then we agree. If it's not, then I would rate this in 9.5, because it tastes absolutely delicious. However, I am taking those things into account, so I'm gonna give it a solid 8. I like the thoroughbred cooler. That's pretty good. I like that. I love this rating system that I have. I can do whatever I want. This is my show now. I love this. You could say it's a one-trick pony because there's only one flavor in there. It's only got one trick, and that's that's the only trick it has. Oh, goodness. Oh, don't break the glass. Hmm. Love that. In any case, I'm going to keep this one close to me because I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a large industrial fan of that one. Nice. Love that. Cool. What's next on the list? Let me clean out my measuring majigger real quick. It's getting a little, getting a little wet. Get things down there, give it a little wipe. I have, um, I have this for that. Just making sure our bar tools are clean. I didn't use the two ounce side at all, so I'm just cleaning out the first half. Um, and I have a bucket here to clean more of the other important things later. Um, yeah, at this point in time, we're kind of, we're two cocktails in. I just want to remind everybody, nothing having to do with socials and stuff like that. Um, you're cool. You're a, good, you're a good person. I appreciate you being here if you are. If you're not here, that's totally okay. You might be going through things in life and all of our support goes out to you. Just try to make things positive around here. If you're in a bad place, I wouldn't say that I'm in the best place of my life right now. And that's because I'm speaking totally honestly, because in my opinion, the like if you're going to put alcohol into your body, you want to be in a, I don't, the term safe space is kind of, I feel like it's kind of loaded these days, but a place that you feel comfortable in. And I want to be able to design this whole bar thing as a place that you feel comfortable at, that I feel comfortable at. And I have bar chairs over here, so I'd like to have guests at some point in time, but this is, I mean, it's not the smallest apartment I've been in, but it is an apartment in the center of Philadelphia, and some people just aren't cool with that. In any case, that is my goal. If we've accomplished that, cool. If not, that's all right too. We're all on a, it's a, life I think is an uphill battle. But uh, with that, we move on with positivity, a smile on our face, and uh, two cocktails now, and a more or less full glass of water. Stay hydrated, my friends. So we will move on. What does the cocktail board say? Well, let's see what the cocktail board says. Well, according to the cocktail board, we're on drink number three, the Man of War. The Man of War, also known as a jellyfish, uh, according to some, is also a famous racehorse. Let's learn about the Man of War. The Man of War, according to <laughs> according to pictures on Google, is a famous racehorse or a really cool looking like blue jellyfish. Nice, love that. Uh, famous racehorse is the Man of War. It has a little thing about it. Excuse me. According to my Google, Google <laughs> my Google horse, According to my Google search, the Man of War was an American thoroughbred racehorse. Thoroughbred, we connected, we connected. We connected them together. We went from horse to horse to other horse. It's like that, um, God, what was that show called? Where you connect like um, race, horse, horse, derby, derby, hat. I don't know what game show that was, but I remember watching it on like the game channel or whatever when I was younger. I don't know why my tongue's sticking out. I was thinking for a moment. Sorry, it's my my thinking face is like a eh. Anyway, 
thoroughbred racehorse, the Man of War, who was widely regarded as the greatest racehorse of all time. Several sports publications, including The Blood Horse, Sports Illustrated, ESPN, and the Associated Press, voted Man of War as the best racehorse of the 20th century. And by the 20th century, we mean the year 1917 from 1947, who um, apparently was sired by Fire Fair Play, who was grandsired by Hastings. I assume this means up the parental chain of the horse whose dam was Mahuba, whose dam sire was Roxanne, and whose um, sex was Stallion. Fold, March 29th, 1917, died November 1st, 1947, at the age, the ripe old age of 30. Country in the United States, color, chestnut. Breeder, August Belmont Jr. Belmont, such a pure name, it seems. Owner was Samuel D. Riddle. Trainer was Louis or Louis Fustel, and has a record it says 21, 20-1-0, earnings, $249,000, 465. I don't know why I said it that way. Anyway, now you have literally all the information that you could ever want about widely regarded as the most famous racehorse of all time, a purebred stallion, dare I say it. In any case, let's move on. We're talking about cocktails today. We're not talking about... I mean, if you get if you learn something today and you get educated, that's a wonderful thing. But you know, pedigree st pedigree stuff is wild when racing is involved. Oh yeah, of course it is. I gotta understand that. I mean, people, um, the earnings was like two hundred forty nine thousand dollars. If you're not paying close attention to the the genealogy of your horse, then you might be costing yourself a pretty buck. I know that it is entire people's jobs to breed horses to make the horses breed with each other via manual intervention. I know that's a job out there, and I think somebody in my in my in-law side of the family is one of them, maybe. I don't know. Sha and Satsu, like I can't even trace my genealogy past my grandparents, part of not being part of not being European. I think I tried to do an analysis one day. And apparently I am five eighths Italian one quarter or two eighths German and then that other eighth is a couple of other things in there which is a mix of I think Hungarian and Czechoslovakian there might be some Russian in there I don't really know according to in in particular my family is from the in Sicily in Italy uh, specifically I used to remember the town's name but I can't remember right now I think it starts with an R R, R something or other I can't remember right now, but in any case, apparently my fiance's side of the family, which is also predominantly Italian, is from like the northern part of Italy, which my future father-in-law says, oh, you're Sicilian, so you've got the genes of anybody who's ever pissed into the Mediterranean Sea. Yes? Maybe? Am I proud to admit it? I don't know. But I'll take it, because I am Sicilian, and I'm proud to be Sicilian. My parents used to tell me, Ragusa, Ragusa, that's where it was. Thank you, parents in the crowd. We appreciate you. Most famous racehorse. But did he get a cute animu grossona in the horse racing idol show, though? I remember that show. I remember that now. There's a show out there, an anime, that takes all, like, the famous racehorses and, like, turns them into, like, anime girls. It's great. I didn't watch all of it. Anna probably has. Shut says, I'm sure mine would like look like this. Hundreds of generations of farmers, some invaders, mixed in with more hundreds of generations of farmers. Dude. Honestly... We are who we are today, and that makes me American. And the rest of the stuff that came behind me is just something that I use because I just want to be able to describe myself with more words. Speaking of words, there are three of them. Man of War, if you consider the O word. If you don't, it's two words, and it's Man of War, or O word. And that is from a cocktail book that, fittingly, I have my little black book here. This was a book I got from my mother a while ago when I first started doing cocktails. I'm very thankful for it. There is, there's notes from her in here. There's notes from me in here. And if my children slash prog progeny ever decide to take on mixology themselves one day, I plan to pass this along to them. And also plan to pass along the Trident Bar Spoon, which is my contribution to the family chain of heirlooms and stuff. This thing is awesome. Wow. It's cool looking. And it can poke your eyes out if used incorrectly. I got a couple of sharp things over here, and I honestly don't know how to use them. But inside of the bartender's black book is a cocktail called the Man of War. And now that I realize it, I wonder if the cocktail is referring to a horse or a jellyfish. I'm inclined to think that it's the horse. And let me walk you through my reason why I think that. I think this because the Man of War in this cocktail book uses bourbon. 
as we've seen previously, the Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Bourbon, has shown up quite a lot in these horse cocktails that we've been exploring so far. So I'm inclined to think that the bourbon here is there because it was inspired by a racehorse. The Man of War, apparently. That's my um, that's my assumption, at least. This also this is made with two ounces or 60 milliliters of bourbon, one ounce or 30 milliliters of orange curacao, half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of sweet vermouth, a dash of lime juice, shake it all up, and strain into a chilled glass. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to chill a glass. I don't have my mini fridge yet. I'm planning on having one shipped in. So instead, I'm going to take this glass here, which has not been chilled, and like throw a couple ice cubes in it. And then while I vamp and spend way too long attempting to explain the reason why we're making this cocktail uh, and about the little tips and tricks about the different ingredients that we have around it, um, the glass will never be chilled because I literally can't shut my mouth, which I think is a plus. So let's go ground and get some ice cubes and we'll prepare this thing for the chilling. Here comes the chiller, chiller night, cause no one's got a chiller glass to me tonight. Chiller, chiller glass, it's chiller than the other glasses, cause I put ice in it while I shook the rest of the drink. Anyway. I like I had way too much fun with that. I'm gonna take this cocktail glass, which is currently being chilled as we speak, and put it to the side. I'm gonna grab a coaster, because I care for my bar, whose name has yet to be decided, and put it off to the side. We will hang around with that chilled glass later on. Okay. Man, I love that. I still like the purebred stallion. I will admit, it's very acidic, and if I don't know if it gets picked up by the microphone, but I'm like, I'm getting really phlegmy back here, and I sincerely apologize for that, but it is a comp it is a consequence of my body chemistry. I suffer from things that make my mucus get like all great crazy. So that happens when I drink acidic things. I do this because I like it and I want to explore new flavors despite the fact that my body's saying, no, don't, don't do it. It's fine. I've been to the doctor about it and they are aware of my particular irregularities. The man of war starts with two ounces of bourbon. And um, I have the bourbon from before. So I'm gonna take that back up again. And it gets shaken. So we're gonna put that into a shaker glass. I have this thing. I'm gonna try to do a trick. If I mess up, it's okay. We all mess up sometimes. Ha, that was so cool and totally underwhelming. I'm gonna put my ice in, I don't know how I usually do it. I put, usually put the ice in here and then in there. I don't know. Apparently there's the technique where you're supposed to take one big, one big ice cube put it in there and crack another big ice cube so that you get like, I don't know, like the optimal cooling and optimal shakeage of all this stuff. I don't know, I didn't read the study, but here's one big ice cube in my cocktail shaker. And here's another big ice cube, which I'm going to, as best as I possibly can, break with the tools I have divide, uh, provided for me. Um, so I'm gonna put it, I, I've never, to this day, I have yet to do something, I've yet to do this successfully, so here we go. Hit. Nope, it's slipping, it's slipping out of my hands. Okay, well, here's another way that we're gonna do that. I'm going to take it and I'm gonna hit it with a bar spoon away from myself because this thing is sharp. Nope, that's actually bending my bar spoon. Um, different idea. I have a muddler. We're gonna use this instead. Incoming loud noises. Nice. I'd call that cracked if I've ever seen it. In any case, that was awesome. I can do that now. Excuse me. In any case, that's all the glass. I, that, that's all the glass that I need in my shaker. Don't anything like that. Bang, bang. Mom can track her side to the Mayflower, but beyond that, no clue. In terms of Lorelai's particular genealogy, I'm also gonna get a couple things prepared. I also down ha here have down here have my sweat vermouth and maraschino churros. My maraschino churros. That's what I was trying to say there. It's whatever. It's cool. It's whatever. You know. It's all, it's all about. In any case, Man of War, if it's not covered in ice chunks and stuff, goes into the cocktail shaker with a sing two single ounces of bourbon, which three milliliters times two is 60 milliliters. So that's what we're going with. Let's take the measuring majigger and put it into our glass. Boop, I love that sound. I'm gonna put it in the small glass over here so we can see how the colors and stuff mix. Um, if, that, if that does it for you, cool. If it doesn't, that's also okay. Two ounces of bourbon into my spare glass here. The other side of my shaker. 
the way that I prefer to shake. I I also have other shakers. For example, this this plaid one. It's very cool looking. It was a gift to me from one of my coworkers. However, I really don't like the style. Also, like it's it's terribly sealed. I also have I also have like a shaker that's made of totally plastic from I think Joe's Crab Shack. It's made of some cheap plastic. And when I take my big ice cubes and shake that thing up, the shaker wants to break. It leaks. Um, so I have it over there uh, near my plants with a little bit of apple cider vinegar, Dawn Dish detergent, um, and whatever was left of, I think, a Coca-Cola, maybe, uh, in order to attract the flies and kill them. And apparently it's still not working. So if anybody has um, house fly removal tricks, I could use them. The fly traps are not working, and neither is the apple cider vinegar trick. I feel like my face may be getting red because this embarrasses me because I don't know how to properly Google for the solution, but this is why I try to crowdsource that information. I have a problem. If you can help me with my problem, I am reaching out for it. Thank you. And thank me for making myself three beautiful cocktails. One of them is a little less beautiful, but we're all beautiful on the inside. We also need a single ounce of orange curacao. Here comes my next rant. The orange curacao that I picked up, I went to the store today. Went to the liquor store and I was trying to find orange curacao specifically. Now I got to the store and I realized that I don't see anything labeled orange curacao in the section of the store where I would usually find blue curacao. There was no blue curacao. There was no orange curacao. There wasn't anything labeled like bowls or har uh, haram walk or anything like that. I didn't see it there. So I was like, um, okay, well, I don't want the blue stuff because I already have the blue stuff. Um, I want the, it's not orange per se, it's just like, it's orange curacao. I don't think it's actually, maybe orange curacao is orange. I don't think it actually is. This certainly isn't. Anyways, so I was trying to find something close to that. A dry orange liqueur, because this particular recipe calls for something, I think it actually says dry, dry, dry orange curacao? Does it? No, just orange curacao. I added the dry on my own because my mind was focused on something else. Anyway, I wanted a dry, a dry orange curacao. And so I just, there were a couple different brands in front of me and I started doing a little bit of research at the store because there was nothing that was calling itself Orange Curacao. And so I think the brands that I wound up seeing were, let me find it, let me find it. There was, of the different orange liqueurs that I found, there was Grand Marnier, there was Cointreau, there was Citroga, Combier, Balchon, Grand Gala, and Royal Montaigne. If I butchered any of those pronunciations, that's because nobody taught me how to say them. I tried on my own. That's my failure. And so I just kind of did a little analysis. I was like, okay, how expensive are all these? They kind of range anywhere from like $15 up to like $30. I think it was the, it was the, there was the Cointreau or Cointreau, Cointreau, Cointreau I think it's Cointreau, um, was priced at $38 for 750 milliliters. And I was like, I am not going to go 40 bucks out of my way to make something that I haven't, in my particular experience, I haven't seen orange curacao very often. So I wasn't going to spend 40 bucks on something that I don't see very often. I spend top dollar on the bourbon because bourbon and whiskey and whatnot shows like up everywhere in cocktail, in cocktail world, at least from what I can tell. So I wanted to spend a little bit of good money on that. It's good to have top shelf liqueurs every once in a while, but I didn't want to try for something super duper top shelf for an orange liqueur that I was just kind of taking a chance on. I didn't want to go the opposite route either. I didn't really want something that was just cheap because I didn't want to walk home being like, I got the cheap stuff because I'm never going to use it again. I didn't want to do that. So I went for something in between. I was looking for a price point. This came in at about, I think it was about 20-ish dollars, 22 I think it was. Um, oh, I should share which one I wound up getting for. I got the Citronga and it is, quote, the, um, according to the internet, it is the first clear orange liqueur, which for some reason I doubt, imported extra fine orange liqueur. I determined the, the distinguishing factor that I was trying to find for the orange liqueur that I was trying to get closest to orange curacao was something that I was as close to orange curacao as I could muster. And what I found was the island of curacao is just north of, I think it's Venezuela, a little bit east of Guatemala, and like southeast of Mexico. And so of all the different orange liqueurs that were there, there was only one that was at least even in South America, and that was this one. Imported extra fine citronga is, it says it's made in Mexico. I don't know if it's just bottled in Mexico or not. I really didn't do too much of a deep dive on it, but it seems like it's going to be the closest to a dry orange curacao that I'm going to get. And so that's what I found. It was also interesting too, because when I bought this, I was like, that's so interesting. I feel like I've seen this bottle before. And lo and behold, I have, because that cork top 
is characteristic of Patron tequila. And so then that got me thinking. I was like, wait a minute. Are these are these using the same base? I wonder. So I did a little bit of Googling, and apparently this bottle used to label itself Patron, but it doesn't anymore. So I have a feeling that this was the one orange liqueur in the store that I was able to find that is actually tequila-based and not like brandy-based, which I feel like... A, a, want to say most other orange liqueurs are. So I thought that would be really, really interesting. So that's what I went with. Also, Patron. It's good. Top, it's really good tequila. My mother loves it. Once upon a time, my mother was like, go to the store and buy me some Patron. And I was like, all right, no problem. And I got to the store and they're like 80 bucks. And I was like, what the hell? I didn't realize that was this expensive. Um, is it worth it? I'm not huge into tequila. I kind of like it. The uh, I'm more like a mezcal, I like smoky agave notes, as opposed to the ones that are just like, it's not as smoky. You know, it's, it can be smoky, depending on what kind of tequila you get, I suppose. But I found that the mezcals are a little more smoky, at least the one that I have, which is Vida, Del Magüe Vida, Vida, which I really, really like. In any case, here is the orange curacao that we're using. It's just orange liqueur. If you have other substitutions, you can do whatever you want to. It's your bar, and this is my bar, so I can do whatever I want to. And that's what I'm going for. And I kind of want to see whether or not it makes the cocktail different than what I would expect it to be. So being that this is new, I wanted to like give it a try because I've never tried it before and I'm really curious to see what it tastes like. So oh, that's what we're going to go for. I'm going to try to take off all this. Eee, come on, I got you. Take off all the plastic there. I don't need it. It does not serve me. Put it to the side and see what that tastes like. Citronga, extra fine orange liqueur produced and bottled in Mexico. I have a little snifter glass that I'm going to go for. I like to put my things that I'm trying into this glass because I can swirl it around and pretend I'm a pretentious wine connoisseur. Maybe. I say pretentious wine connoisseur. I don't want to say like sommelier or anything like that because I, I mean, I personally, I haven't met a sommelier that was an asshole. So uh, I don't want to call them pretentious. I'm sure they're wonderful people. And I do want to give this a try. Right off the bat, I don't know why I'm putting my nose to it. Let's put it over here. Yo, work that body. It says to do LED one flexions. So... This is how we do LED one flexions. It's time for me to get up and do some workout. You have to take your... Hold on a second. Hold on. It's workout time. This is what we do. You spent points on it, so this is what we have. Hi there, everybody. I'm getting closer. Here we go. There's actually a liminal space in between the bar and everything else. Now it's a workout cocktail show. Make sure to hydrate. We'll go back to the horse's neck. Hmm. Delicious. Absolutely incredible. LED one flexions. Um, I don't remember what LED stands for. I think D1 means division one, maybe, and a flexion. It's a way to move your body. And I'm pretty sure you take your leg up and like put it to the side and like do that. My dearest is not here right now, so she has no way to correct me. And it's been a hot minute since somebody's asked me to work out like this. So why don't we all get up and do some LED one flexions? Look straight into the camera, into your soul, because if you were the broadcaster, you'd want to do the same thing and just kind of move your leg. Do about 10 on each side. Have I done 10 yet? Not exactly sure. Now let's switch legs while continuing to remain to keep eye contact, which I'm actually trying to practice. So if this feels a little disturbing, it's because I'm trying to become better at what I do. And I am not sorry, although I am kind of sorry. That's pretty cool. Low and lie. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know what your comment was. Oh, it was the, uh, oh, that was it. It was the, uh, the comments about the genealogy from the Mayflower. Pretty cool, Lorelai. Pretty cool. In any case, when you're finished with your D1 flexions, what you're gonna do is you're gonna zoom the camera back in, because this is actually kind of creepy. I'm gonna move out of frame, just so I can make sure everything lines up properly. I don't have my glasses on. All right, I'm gonna move back behind the bar. Unless someone makes me do it again, which honestly could happen, and I would not be surprised if they do, because that was... That was different. In any case, I'm gonna put my possibly tequila-based orange liqueur to the side and we're gonna give it a try. This is Citronga. What does it smell like? All right, the the first thing that I smell, it's very, very, it, tastes, it smells almost like vodka. Do I like, Mark? do I enjoy martinis? Yeah, I do enjoy martinis. Not as much as I thought I would. Actually, a little more than I thought I would, if I'm speaking honestly. But this is, it smells very, it smells very alcoholic. What is the proof on this thing? This is 70 proof. It's 35% alcohol. 
it's I, I remember actually when I was researching this, I did see I'm gonna pull it up again because there was a little there was a um Citronge orange liqueur extra fine. I was looking up to see like what kind of descriptors there are about this liqueur to make sure I was making the right making the right choice. And according to patrontequila.com, bienvenidos, what is your birthday? This is my birthday. Know my location? No thanks, that's fine. I will enter my birthday though, because I am very much of drinking age. And if you don't believe me, I I'm sorry, I am of drinking age. I'm very sorry. Um, it says, a fine balance, color, clear. Remember that? Don't give me that. Don't give me that marketing stuff. Give me a description. Words, please. Something I can read. There's a pop up on the screen. Okay. A delicate blend. Citronga Orange is a delicately blended liqueur that delivers a sweet and smooth, fresh orange taste. It is perfect for use in both cocktails and gourmet recipes. That was... No, what the heck? That's not what I found before. Gosh damn it! Okay, well, in any case, I'm pretty sure I saw something on Google that said that this was the first clear orange curacao, supposedly. I might be quoting that wrong. And the other one was that it was the most dry that you're going to get from something based on oranges. Um, I don't know I don't know if that's true either, but I'm gonna, it certainly makes sense from what I can smell here. I'm also going to... I'm going to give it a taste too. So let's see. Is it orangey? Is it vodka-y? Is it tequila-y? I have no idea. Let's find out. Gazukov, which I think is how you say cheers or down the hatch in German. Okay. Oh, yeah. That is... If I were to imagine... If you were to imagine, and if I were to imagine, the smell of orange essence, like somebody gave you a vial of oil and said, put that in a vaporizer and you'll smell orange. If somebody said, somebody said, here, I'm going to peel an orange right in front of you and you have to smell it. And you smelled it, the what you smell is what this tastes like. It's actually very sweet. It's very, very hot. It's very alcoholic. And it is definitely burning the back of my throat in kind of a good way. I kind of enjoy this feeling. Not everybody does. Inky, as some would call it. But it really, it, on the tongue, it is very, very sweet. And it tastes the way that orange zest smells which I think is really, really cool. And it doesn't taste like, I don't get any tequila notes on it. So if it is tequila based, it's been distilled enough that I just don't notice, which is pretty cool. Shatantatsu says, I've only had it once, the martini that is, and it was awful. It tasted like alcoholic bath water. Also, better to look young than old. Shatantatsu started bartend, bal balding, balding at 20. I don't know why I thought bartending. You could be a bartender if you want to. Just mix things together and tell people you're doing it right. Brother started balding senior year of high school. No kidding, really? Wow. I think, I know somebody personally actually that um, I think they, I think their father started like, their hair started getting like um, white. I think in the, like toward the end of high school, maybe early college. So the fact that balding started happening and whatnot, I, I would not be surprised. Hey, sometimes balding is the look. I have not gotten balding yet, but um, if it were to happen, I gotta think, if I started balding, I love, I love my hair. I'm actually, I planned on getting a haircut yesterday in preparation for today's stream, but like my hairstylist who, this is wild. I went to the hair cutter and walked right in and I was like, um, are you taking walk-ins today? And the stylist was like, no, we're completely booked for today. By the way, you're Cameron, right? And I was like, yes, I am. You're absolutely right. I haven't been back to this particular hair cuttery for four months. And the person remembered me, he remembered me. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I remember his name too. And I was like, uh, but I'll be in later this week, and I absolutely will be. I work from home tomorrow, so I plan on uh, taking my lunch at the stylist. Because this, this is such a good feeling. No lie, though, shouldn't talk to. That's actually pretty cool, the white hair thing. Good sign. Honestly, yeah. Like, if I, if I started going white early, the hair, I mean, I'm already white, as you can clearly see, I would go full ham on it, honestly. If, I, if that was going to happen, I would let my hair do its thing. If I go gray one day, I'm going to let it happen. And if I start going bald one day, I love this hair very much. But um, that's... That's a sure sign that it's time to let it go. And so if I started balding, I'd probably just I'd, I'd let it go. That's what I would do. I'm trying to find, I don't have a proper place for used glasses. So I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna put them out of view. If it's still in view, nah, let's put it there, that's fine. Nobody cares, I don't care. In any case, yeah, that's really good. It's very orange forward, which I feel if you are advertising yourself as an orange, Liqueur, L-I-Q-U-E-U-R, then you better be sweet. 
Supposedly, and this is from my cocktail collection of classes, if you call yourself a liqueur, that means you have a higher percentage of sugar than you do a percentage of alcohol by volume. This says it is 35% alcohol by volume, which makes me think that the sugar content is up in the higher 30s and dare I say 40s ranges, which if that is the case, oh, that's sweet. And this is very sweet. I like that. In any cases, I think I've blabbered on enough about that. The orange curacao will take up one ounce of space in the glass. Is one ounce a volume? Yeah, it is a volume. So let's take my measuring majigger, flip to the other side, and pour a single ounce of citronga orange liqueur in there. There we go. Pour it in. You make a little mess? That's okay. That's something we can be proud of. And I will put that away because now that I know that I've like... Previously, every single time a cocktail recipe of mine called for orange curacao or just curacao, I decided that I was going to go for the blue curacao because that's just what I had. That's what I was going to use, and I wanted to see what kind of effect it had on the drink's color. It turned it blue, sometimes green. Who knew? But um, it was cool, and it worked for a while. But the taste of the blue curacao began to be, began to be something that I could recognize way too easily. The one that I have, the blue curacao that I have is, um, it's Haram Walker. It's very syrupy, it's very viscous, and it gave me a sweet flavor that just like, I don't know, it wasn't very orangey to me. Not in the way that I imagine oranges to taste. This actually makes me think that I'm, like like I said, it's like so I was drinking the smell of somebody zesting an orange, and I really, really like that. So I am totally into it, and so that's what I'm gonna go for. And I will happily add Citronga, extra fine orange liqueur, Patron, to my bar collection. I'm very happy about that. And now that we have an ounce of our orange liqueur in there, we have to do something else. What else do we add? We add a half an ounce of sweet vermouth. I only have two sweet vermouth options in my abode. Um, there's either a Martini and Rossi or Antica Formula, Carpano. This was recommended me. Uh, this was recommended to me by a friend and also online. I've seen this one pop up a couple times, and I got the little tiny bottle so that it, I don't like keep it around as often. I think the tip that I was given was that. <laughs> If you're gonna buy like a good like like vermouth like this that should be kept in the fridge or like a cream liqueur, then you might wanna get something that's a little bit smaller because we wind up, like I don't use this very often, so it's going to sit in my refrigerator for a long time. Wine, vermouth and whatnot oxidizes over time and it can change the flavor of the, what, you know, the liquor on the inside. And so if you want to avoid that, you gotta keep it in like, like um, like a special space, like something that doesn't let a lot of air in, there's no chance to oxidize, you put a little bit of, um, I don't actually have the, it's it's in the front bin over there, but there's a compound that I think is mostly inert gases that you can spray into the bottle to reduce the amount of oxi oxidization because the inert gases is playing on the bottom, it keeps out the oxidizing stuff from the top. Um, that, that's how that works, uh, but I can't reach it right now. And I don't remember whether or not I used it on this already. So if I didn't, then, well, this is how it is. Anyway, would definitely recommend smaller stuff because you go through it at, if you're, if the rate at which you go through it is not a lot, you might as well keep something that you're going to refresh every once in a while. It just keeps things fresh, you know? And you don't have to keep things fresh if you don't want to. The Martini and Rossi, which is a 750 milliliter bottle, has been sitting inside of my refrigerator for a while now. So um, it's something, it's been in there for a while. It doesn't taste any, to me, it doesn't taste any different than it was previously, but one never knows. My palate is not yet refined, so I don't know. Half an ounce of whatever sweet vermouth you've got online. And if it's not sweet vermouth, it's sweet vermouth. It says to use sweet vermouth. I guess you can use dry vermouth. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters. Dark Techie says, hey. Cameron says, hey. What's going on, Eric? How you doing? Appreciate you popping in. I see that you've been streaming a lot recently. My sincerest apologies for not popping on. It's usually a little bit later in the day. I get very, very tired with the work stuff that I'm doing. And for that, I apologize. Honestly, I am... I'm not really the kind of person who pops in on other thing, like in other people's stuff and whatnot. I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm trying to get better at that, but I haven't gotten there yet. And it's a, it's a constant, it's a constant state of improvement for me. So this is where we are currently. One half an ounce, 15 milliliters of sweet vermouth in your cup. Eric says, yeah, just been grinding out the stream. LOL. Don't worry about it. Oh good, oh good. Honestly, and I feel the same way. To the people out there who I know personally who stream, if you don't pop into my streams, I don't care. You got a life to live. So I completely understand that. You shouldn't feel bad about it literally at all. If you do feel bad about it, you can pop in and say, hey, I'll, cure, I'll forgive you if you do that. 
Anyways, the next ingredient we need in our Man of War, which is either a jellyfish cocktail or a horse cocktail, but I think we have a, an overwhelming amount of evidence for the horse cocktail conclusion. Um, we also add a dash of lime juice. So I don't know whether or not you're supposed to add the dash of lime after shaking or before shaking. If I'm following the instructions from the book, as I attempt to look around and find where that book is, where the hell did I put that? Oh, it's down here. The book does say bourbon, curacao, vermouth, dash of lime juice, shake. So I'm inclined to think that it goes in before everything. So let's get some lime juice. Um, it says a dash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the lime that I put to the side earlier. Here's my lime. I cut this earlier. And I'm going to take my citrus squeezer and I'm going to just put the smallest pump of lime juice. Uh, just enough to really see something get in there. Pump. There we go. That's that's a pump if I've ever seen it. Don't forget to pump your limes. And then when you pump your limes enough, pump the brakes. That's a very weird euphemism. Dark. Eric says, just be working on French and whatnot. French is a cool language. I was just talking to somebody who's from France earlier today. They're lovely. I don't speak the language of French. Anna did take French in high school, though. And she's, she's tried to talk to me every once in a while. We do better with German. I think German German flies a little bit better in our household. And we've also tried to teach each other like sign language and stuff. Although I am very much out of practice. And if I tried to prove to you that I sign sign language, I'd be making a fool of myself. But don't worry. I really love you. I know that at least. Eric says German is more fun. Oh yeah, dude, my favorite German word is Geschwindigkeitsbegrenzung, which is speed limit. It's just a long ass word. The more specific you get, the more longer the words get. Sometimes. And also, Helen Keller in German means a very lightly lit basement. So take that out of context, it seems. Good stuff. So we have the dash of lime. We have the bourbon. We got the vermouth. We got the curacao. The only thing left is to shake and put into our chilled glass. The other thing that we'll need as well, and before, I'm going to shake this up, and then I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. We also need a garnish, and we'll work on that after the fact. So let's give it a shake. Pour on in. Top it off. This is a wet shake, regular shake. So what actually happens is there's a pressure differential between the inside and the outside. It actually creates a little suction chamber, a little bit of a vacuum in there. And so it'll stick together. It'll take a little bit of effort to take off from there. If you're doing a dry shake, such as no ice and an egg or something, it's gonna do the opposite effect. So it might wanna burst on you. So you might need to hold things tight over there. If you, you know, you don't want a mess that is, which I've made multiple times. Let's do some shakes. In any case, I'm gonna put that to the side because we're gonna work on a garnish now. Uh, what that garnish is, I'll tell you. The garnish that we're going for is, I saw, so essentially what I did is, it's not stated in the book, if I'm correct in saying. No, it is not. The Man of War in this book does not say that it uses a garnish, but personally, I really like, if I'm given the opportunity to garnish, I'm gonna put a garnish on there. And so what I have seen pictures of is people taking the Man of War cocktail, putting it into like a bowl that looks more like a jellyfish. So that kind of goes to the interpretation on the opposite side of my conclusion. And they put a, a skewer with a cherry in the middle and the peel of, I wrote down a lemon, a lemon wedge peel. So that's what we're gonna go with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cutting board back up. I'm gonna go on here. I'm gonna put the yoga back back up and I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit. I might actually need the other yoga block for this. So I am gonna go over and uh, get the other yoga line, which is, honestly, there is much, there must be a better way to elevate my cocktails and garnishes, um, both physically and metaphorically to elevate, um, aside from yoga blocks, but I just haven't come up with one yet, so bear with me, folks. It's always, it takes a village, so they speak. It takes a village to construct a proper bar. So we're going to get on here where you can see just the top of the little doggy there. Look, it's a doggy at a desk. Oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't. In any case, let's get a lemon. I need a lemon, which I'll place here. I'm not gonna take the eviscerated lemon. This was the my attempt at channeling a lemon. I channeled my inner lemon, and this is the demon that formed. Um, that, that's cool, I can, I can use that later on. So we're gonna take a wedge of this lemon. Uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, take an edge, a, a <laughs> I can't speak words all the time, and this time I'm no speaking the words. Half a lemon, half, half a lemon, lemon wedge, le lemon wedge. It's a wedge. Let's take the seeds out of there. I don't want seeds. No seeds. 
Little seeds. There goes the lemon. We put it in that bin. I will use it later. Now that we have our lemon wedge, I only want the peel. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like... I'm going to see how well I can do peeling this lemon. Oh, yo, it's totally working. It is totally working. Yo, look at that. Yo. That totally worked. Just like an orange. Um, what we do with this lemon peel is your choice. I can eat it. I could. And I'm going to keep it over here until I decide to do so. The other thing that we need is a cherry. I got cherries back here. Um, I think the internet said specifically maraschino cherry. It doesn't have to be, but I actually do have Table Joy brand maraschino cherries. Not a brand endorsement, just an observation. And I need to get a skewer. So I do have some bamboo skewers here. I have a couple different colors, and this one strikes me as more a red color. Consumption! See, look, there goes the lemon peel. Mmm. 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 God, that's sour. Anyway, I did it. I consumed. That is gonna wreak havoc on my esophagus later. But we did it! Anyway, I needed a maraschino cherry. So let's go for it. Where are you? There you are. Excellent. Maraschino cherry. Place that in our staging station. Okay, you're where you can fall over. You've been sitting in alcohol. Have you? Actually, is this is there alcohol in this? No. It's high fructose corn syrup. Pfft, that's lame. Let's take another sip of a cocktail. I need that. Alrighty then. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take the skewer from one side and poke it through. Whoa, trying to keep with our wits about us. It's slippery. It's a slippery lemon. We'll go through one side, trying my best to illustrate this. Right? Nice. I'm going to put the cherry in between. Right? Nice. And then uh, push it through to the other side and then adjust the width of this as necessary. Looks pretty good. That cherry is just kind of like sitting in there. Look at that. It's like a little, it's kind of like a happy face. Sort of, kind of. And we're three cocktails in, so of course we're happy. <laughs> but why wouldn't we be? In any case, oh, I don't know why I'm zooming out. We're gonna make the cocktail. So I'll zoom out just a little bit, just so I can illustrate the fact that our glass has been secretly, not so secretly, chilling like an absolute villain this entire time. Please excuse me for a moment. That lemon is taking its toll. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about that. In any case, let's move on. Also, I think I ate a couple seeds. They're definitely stuck in my mouth now. They're actually not that bad. Whole lemon. It's great. So we're going to take our chilled glass water. It's water now. It used to be ice. And I'm just going to kind of discard it. I don't need it. It's not what I want. I just want a chilled glass. And my God, I have a chilled glass. And then we are going to strain out the solids from before. I'm just going to give this a quick shake just to agitate a little bit. I know we said we're trying not to agitate horses, but I am agitating this man of war. If it's a jellyfish, I'm happy to agitate. If it is actually a horse, I'm sorry, stallion. Very sorry. Although, not that sorry. It's fine. It's fine. I'll put this off to the side. I will find a better solution for discarded glasses at a later date. And uh, let's strain it out. I got a little strainer here. Um, there's a lot of particulates in there, so I'm going to use the finer strainer. Let's give it a zoom. How's this thing looking? Go all in there. Excuse me, I'm probably going to sneeze in a moment. Maybe? <laughs> the world was playing tricks on me. I was not going to sneeze. Man of War! Feels like it must have been used as a supervillain name by now, right? And if it hasn't been, opportunity for you uh, animation people out there or people who make comics. Sea-themed villain against Aquaman. That's what I'd imagine. Jellyfish evil villain. All right. A Man of War. Here comes the jelly horse. Here comes the jelly horse. Delicious, delicious jelly horse. And we're gonna pop. I guess this is a boat on top, right? If this is supposed to be the jellyfish interpretation, that is a that is a man on a boat or a person. It's a red cherry. It's a virgin on a boat hanging above the very dimly oranged waters. It's orange. Excuse me. I feel like okay. Bear with me a moment here. If this was the jellyfish interpretation, if we wanted to make this be the jellyfish interpretation, I feel like what I could, what I should have done is instead of orange curacao, we use blue curacao, so this looks blue or greenish instead of the orange color, and instead of using 
I guess instead of using bourbon, which gives us this brown color, I'd use something a little more clear. Clear waters. Let's call it, let's say like, um, like gin. Perhaps a gin or maybe even a rum. Because rum of the seas, tropical. Actually, I'd use a rum. If I were to make this the man of war jellyfish, what I would have done is replace the bourbon with rum, something clear, a white rum like Bacardi or something. Doesn't do too much. Or something kind of funky that also has that clearness to it. You could do like, um, like, um, trying to think of an example. I don't really have an example here. I don't have any, I don't have many, many light rums that would be able to keep that blue color. Although, I don't know exactly how the blue would work with the orange, so you could use something that's a little more dark. And, instead of the orange curacao, you'd use the blue curacao. And that's how I make the Man of War jellyfish versus the Man of War stallion cocktail. That's how I would do it. If you got other ideas, let me know. I'm curious. I really, I, I really am. Okay, now I'm also going to take my obligatory Instagram picture. If you're into that sort of stuff, I have an Instagram if you'd like to follow that. We post cocktail stuff on that right now, but I'm hoping to do a little bit more. Let me get an image. Hi, everybody. Quick, pose for the camera. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, I'm going to do it this way. Quick. Say cheese. The cocktail is kind of saying cheese now that I think about it. It's kind of got that smile going out about it, and I like that. DC Comics says Man of War was an... Atlantean, Atlantean, who was experimental, experimented on by a villain. Okay, so according to the DC universe, this is, um, this is, this is a, um, oh my god, what do you call those things that sting you in the ocean? Ah, jellyfish, you're right. I'm gonna very carefully take this off of the podium, put it down, and then very haphazardly move the yoga box out of the way. Aha, I did it. Quick, and you didn't even see me coming. Alternatively, a Captain Adam villain. It is. It absolutely is. It is kind of smiling. All right. Um, this is filled precariously. Looks very good. I kind of like that. So let's see. It's this was the Man of War. It could be a jellyfish, but I think it's a horse, at least in this form. The horse form. Horse form. F O R M E, like the Pokemon, uh, would be created with two ounces or 60 milliliters of bourbon. We have one ounce or 30 milliliters of orange curacao. We have half an ounce or 15 milliliters of sweet vermouth. We have a dash of lime juice. Shake that all up, strain it, put a little garnish thing on it. If you wanted to do jellyfish form, which is what I'm calling it now, instead of the bourbon, Use rum, a clear rum, or something a little more colorful if you have a powerful blue curacao, and replace the orange curacao with some blue stuff. It's a little more viscous. Um, some people like it more. I like it a little less than the orange stuff, because I am like in love with that orange curacao, which I use citronge. It's S-C-I... What am I doing? I can spell it out for y'all. C-I-T-R-O-N-G-E. Um... And that definitely has an accent or certain somewhere. Aha! Oh, Citrone. I like that. Really good. Absorb this. Write it down. Absorb it into your memory. You will never see it again. My face is going over top of it, so you don't get a second chance. But if you missed it, I'll just do this. Citrone. Nice. The Man of War, horse form, tastes like... spill on my bar that's what it tastes like ow that's powerful so there's two ounces of bourbon in there right so it's very very heavily forward on that alcohol flavor however i think from for me at least a lot of that alcohol burniness is not actually coming from the bourbon i think it's actually coming from the orange liqueur that went into there which i felt it was, it was um 35 percent so 70 proof and i think that really shines through at least in the alcohol component of it it is not that sweet. It's a very dry, sweet cocktail. And honestly, this is kind of what I had in mind when you were trying to, I thought to myself like, oh, I want to use a dry curacao here, which is not what the recipe calls for, but it's what I did because that's, that just like made, it made sense in my brain. And so it really is a powerful cocktail that isn't too forward on the fruit, but it really does taste like, like the, um, like the orange in there. And I'm going to take another sip too. Because I'm getting like an after flavor that's not quite orange. And I want to say that's the vermouth coming through. <coughs> I definitely swallowed that the wrong way. Oh my god. <clears throat> the, strong, the strong citron. Oh yeah, citrone. Stronger citrone. Excuse me. I need to take a little bit of water. I did not get any flavors there. So I need to try that again.
Sorry about that. That was weird. That was awkward. Eric says, it's probably the lemon fighting back. Oh my god. Yeah, because of how I completely eviscerated it. There was also the dash of lime in there. I will say, there is... Don't exactly know how to describe it. But lime juice hits me differently than lemon juice and orange juice does. And I find that lime kind of exists in, like, the not the tip of my tongue, but a little bit farther back. And that's like the forward part of the sides of my tongue. And there's a certain air in my mouth too, and it is distinctly lime. It's not orange, although I'm kind of getting it mixed up between like the alcoholiness of the orange liqueur in there and probably the bourbon. And there's probably something in the bourbon playing a lot in there too, which I kind of like. Flavor a war. Flavor. Flavor a war. It's a flavor war. All right. I'm gonna try this one more time. This time, hopefully correctly, and try to get some proper flavor notes. It also doesn't help that like there is this much space like basically an entire, entire head's length in between me and the cocktail in front of me because I can only lean so far uh, before things start looking weird and I start getting uncomfortable and queasy. And it's not the cocktails, I assure you. Oh, oh yeah. Wow, okay. First thing I get, aside from the alcohol, which exists mostly in the back of my mouth, is on the tip of my tongue, right where I tasted that orange, like, zest flavor from the orange liqueur, it's still there. Right back behind it, I, I might be talking like total garbage here, but this is just, the, this is how I'm interpreting the feelings that are going on inside of my mouth, the party that's happening in my mouth. This is how I'm, this is how I'm vibing with it. Um, behind that is like a lime flavor that's going on. It's kind of mix it, mixing with the orange, so it's just like citrus but it's a sweet citrus not a totally dry citrus like like i've been told like bitter oranges taste it's behind that like campari if you've ever had campari which is a like a bitter orange base like italian botanical liqueur that's orange but in a dry more so on the dry side than it is on the sweet side this is more sweet than what I would take a Campari to taste like. And Campari's got other shit going on too, but in terms of the orange aspect, it's less dry than a Campari bitter orange. Um, but definitely, definitely more dry than like any sort of triple sec or blue curacao or anything else touting a orange flavor forward. I've never tried Cointreau and I've never tried Grand Marnier. So I believe those are also like prominent orange liqueurs, but I don't, excuse me, I don't really know where they fall on the spectrum. So that's what I'm getting with this. I personally am burping a lot. There's a lot of shit going on in my body right now. Personally, I like this. I think this is really good. It's not something that I went down very quickly, but it's not what I was expecting it to be. Although also kind of also what I expected it to be. I want to say that like the vermouth, in my opinion, doesn't come through very much. I think there's just there's just not a lot of it. I think it's kind of just there for helping with the color, at least with the vermouth that I used. Usually I find that the Carpano Antica is a little, it's, it's bubble gummy. It's almost got that bubble gum flavor to it, which I found is like, it's kind of banana, it's kind of cherry, it's kind of cream. All combined together is what I interpret bubble gum to taste like, but I don't get that. I'm not getting it here. So I honestly think that you could sub out a nicer vermouth for something that's a little more, uh, you know, wallet friendly for this. A little more cheap, as I could say, for this particular cocktail. There are other cocktails out there that that doesn't apply for. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure people will tell you the classics don't abide by that. But apparently this may be a classic or not. This is my fight against the purists. I think it can be, I think it could do it cheaper, but it's good and I like that. Honestly, in terms of the complexity that I'm getting here, the whole flavor experience, I would give this extra points for complexity. Minus points for like, it's not as sweet. So, I mean, I would really enjoy this. I wouldn't be able to down this. So minus points there. But this is nice, it's complex. It looks pretty and I'm a fan of it. So I'm not gonna go too high up, but I'll call this an 8.5. It's above the thoroughbred cooler, but for a different reason. And now I'm thinking like, I just decided to sum up the entire cocktail experience of in a single number. And I feel like if I'm trying to do this properly, there should be like different categories like, Here's a category for appearance. There's a category for complexity. Here's a category for literally anything else. But um, I didn't have that forethought. So take that as you will. Lorelai says, God says, what if I made it so liquids could taste dry, but nothing dry could taste juicy? Angel, please stop giving the apes more anxiety, sir. They don't need this. Ah, uh, I didn't need this, but I have it. And honestly, now I have this moral quandary going inside of my mind. I'm like, what is the dry? 
What is the not so dry? What's the dry? What's the wet? I don't know what the dry or wet is. Somebody stop me and help me. Somebody help me. Hey, a solid progression for the night. Absolutely, this has been pretty good. Honestly, we had, when I finally, well, we had, let's let's review so far. On our cocktail derby today, what's, what's the left-hand side? This is the left-hand side, so I will put the cocktails in order from appearance. In the first seat, we had the horse's neck, which had bourbon and ginger ale, supposedly a dry ginger ale. It was all right, coming in at about a 6.5 out of 10. You can add Angostura bitters for a couple extra points for a 6.9, but as time goes on, it kind of gets a little watery and goes back to tasting like it did before because it's all diluted. It's back to a 6.5. That's where we're at right now. In the middle category, the second one, we have the Thoroughbred Cooler, which has a lot of fruity th stuff going on. It's very, very drinkable. Very, very drinkable. And I love it. It also had some grenadine at the bottom, which looks like it's kind of dissolved into the rest of the drink. And it's got a pretty funky looking garnish there. The lime wedge was not called for and neither was the straw, but I felt like I needed it, so I went for it. So that's what we went for. And I gave that an eight, a solid eight, because it tastes really good. There's not a lot of like, there's, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like astounding. It also isn't like the most complex drink. So um, that's where it landed, but it's cool. It's had some ice glass in it and whatnot. Um, also, the Man of War also gets minus points because the cocktail garnish is hard and I had a hard time with it, so. Horse number three, we have the Man of War, or maybe it's a jellyfish, it's not. Not this time at least, which has the best of all the world's bourbon. We have orange and some vermouth and stuff in there and a dash of lime with a kind of fancy looking like boat garnish, if you can call it a boat, or maybe it's a dude riding a horse, a lady riding a horse, a person riding a horse. I have no, literally no idea. It looks kind of cool. It's a cherry, so we can definitely say that they are a virgin. We know that for a fact, unless... <laughs> no, just kidding. Sorry, loud noise warning. It happened. I did that. I should give more warnings like that. In any case, that was coming in at about an 8.5. I liked it. It's not as chuggable as the thoroughbred, the thoroughbred cooler is. However, it's got, it got more complexity. It's got a more satisfying garnish. And honestly, I think that ranks above that if I had to do a comparison wise. Not by much because we only have 10 points to give, at least from what I can tell. This is, this rating system was kind of cool. I was, I was kind of into that. And technically speaking, we also have the if you were if you stuck around until the end congratulations you made it congratulations you won please click on this pop-up old internet reference i suppose um where the derby is combining everything together now i will say this this was very very this was very very nice. this was fun i like this so this is the this is the how i plan on doing like the new format of the bar with an x where it's just a cocktail day usually would have would have switched to a game at this point but i decided to go with three cocktails it may not always be three cocktails it might be just one but i will at least have at least one thing prepared every week on wednesday nights at eight o'clock p.m eastern standard time because i like this i put all this effort into the bar it'd be a shame if i let it go to waste and it's just like I think this is cool, and I very much enjoy myself here, and hopefully y'all do as well. If you do, cool. Let me know if you want to. If you don't want to, that's totally okay too. The fact that y'all are still around warms up my heart and proves to me that I literally have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, I'm doing it right. No matter what it is that I do as I try to like explore this world that we have here. A, solid per, oh, yes, all these horses are bays. Correction, duns are more yellow. I don't know what either of those words mean and I could Google them if I want to, but I'm not good. The Google is actually downstairs. If I, usually I have access to the Hey Google commands, but if my phone doesn't respond, then I don't have access to them. My phone did not respond, so we don't get that this time. Now presenting the Derby. The Derby is what we're calling all of these horses mixed together. We have, coming in the first slot, we have the horse's neck. It's literally just the horse's neck. It is severed from the rest of the body, except it is somehow moving on its own and floating through the air. We have no idea how it got there. It's grotesque to look at, and nobody's bet against it because nobody thinks a horse's head is going to win, except for the godfather, who for some reason has an extreme preference toward that, which is why the pool for the horse's neck has the same amount of money as the other horses that we have in the lineup. We also have the thoroughbred cooler. A thoroughbred, except it's just the blanket that sits on top of them. Nobody thought that a single blanket alone was going to make it this far into the race, but somehow, some way, it did. And it's actually lined up rather well against our other actual horses out in the crowd. Plus, it's purebred. The blanket itself is not purebred. It was just sitting on top of a purebred horse, particularly a stallion. Um, it's just, it's cool. It's kind of like a brand name. It doesn't really mean anything. It just makes people want to pay more money for it. And in the third chair, chair, 
Lane? I don't know. We have the Man of War, the world-renowned, like, basically the best racehorse that's ever been seen between the years of 1917 and 1947 for 30 years or so. Purebred Stallion, truly, coming into, like, everybody knew this this guy was going to be top. And lo and behold, he totally is. And uh, look at that cherry. Look at that, look at that garnish action there. That's just, man, you just can't beat that. And they're all going to go head-to-head. -head. What? Is going to win. I have no idea. <laughs> Lorelai says, these are horse colors, as I understand. Reverse Raymond horse neck. Kind of clear, kind of like yellowish, whatever, and like a dark orange. I like that. They're very much horse colors, like almost like a like a like a gingery red color. <laughs> In any case, I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna grab a mixing glass. And what I'm going to do is right smack in the center of all these guys. I'm gonna put a single large ice cube right in the center. And then, let's see how that works. One ice cube in the center ring. I only need one, and hopefully it doesn't slip out of my fingernails. Don't knock things over. Only one, that's all I need. Oh, I just spilled water all over the ground. That's okay, that's why I have towels. Anyway, go, towel, do your thing. Yeah, yeah nice job, towel, excellent job. I should have a bigger towel here next time. Noted. In any case, I also have my bar spoon. We'll put it on the inside and we'll see what happens when all these things go head to head all in the middle. Why not? We can do whatever we want to here. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer. We're gonna get to the glass. Here comes the glass. Here comes a single yoga block. Here we go. Kind of scoot that right in the middle. Excuse me, excuse me horses. Excuse me, excuse me horses. Thank you, thank you. There we go, nice. Right smack in the middle. All right, cool. So first up, first lane, it is the, what's it called? The horse's neck. The ever levitating horse's neck goes into our particular concoction here in full spirit. I hope that I don't run out of space to use things. In our second lane, we also have the thoroughbred cooler, who is thoroughbred and I mean, they're doing pretty good right now. Come on out. Don't come out of the straw. That'd be wonderful if you don't. Go ahead, go ahead. There we go. And you know what? We're gonna add the garnishes in there too. Here comes an orange wedge. Here comes a lime wedge. Oh, come on. Lime wedge. Lovely. Discarded glasses will stay on the bar this time. And we also have the Man of War. We have the boat or individual riding the horse and uh, whatever else was on the bottom of it, whether that be a jellyfish or an actual purebred stallion. Put it all together and what do you have? This is what mixology is all about. It's about fucking around with high-proof spirits and seeing what comes out the other side and whether we can learn something from it. I think. That, or we get drunk off of it. Who really knows, honestly? Give that a good old spin. I call this the Derby. It's a draft horse at best. It is not purebred, to say the least. And um, because, because I'm thinking about horses, I'm going to put this into a properly shaped boot glass, which I think deserves a second yoga block for this particular display. Here we go. I don't need that. The horse boot, it's my spurs. Alcohol, alcohol. And now we will pour this particular concoction into the spur. I need a strainer. I have a strainer that I have on standby. This is, I don't like this strainer. The derby, it's a derby. Oh, come on, why are you, oh, dude. Spilling out the other side, there we go. That's what it's all about. I am not adding any ice there. I just, I just don't wanna. No, stop spilling. Ah, it's fine. And what do you garnish through that with? Oh, pff, I'm glad you asked. Garnish it with that. Garnish it. Let's try to make this look nice. No, let's not. <laughs> and um, there's a couple of hairs. There we go. This is, it's evolved. Welcome, the Derby. Welcome to Kentucky, everybody. We host our Derby every single year, except maybe they didn't have it during the COVID years. I'm not so sure. That is kind of, that's kind of dripping around there. I think that deserves a straw. Oh goodness. Well, mistakes were made, but this is why we make mistakes. Because it's fun. It's entertaining. It's great. Look at that boot. Look at that boot. Oh, <laughs> obligatory Instagram picture. What is this absolute monstrosity? We're gonna give him the boot. It's the leaky boot. It's the leaky boot derby. It's what I call my own derby. Welcome to the leaky boot derby. We're happy to have you. Please. Keep your bets in your pocket. Uh, nobody's getting paid out. Welcome everybody to, oh, I lost my, I lost my dry towel. So I'm gonna use the dry side of my wet towel. 
Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the, um, what did I just call this thing? I don't even remember what I just called this thing. Huh. Whatever. Derby. With an X. Bucket, oh, you can't even see that. <clears throat> the Leaky Boot. That was it, the Leaky Boot Derby. There we go. Leaky Boot. Welcome to the Leaky Boot Derby, everybody. I'm your host, Cameron, with an X. It's been fun, y'all. Let's see how this thing tastes. Oh my goodness. Yep, that's why, that's why I have a dump bucket. Because shit like that happens, and my floor is a mess. I'm so glad to see that this is what's going to happen every week, at least from what it seems going forward. And the Leaky Boot Derby tastes like... Oddly balanced. It's honestly not that bad. So what I'm getting is bourbon, most of all, because it's literally nothing but bourbon. Just various different combinations of bourbon. What comes through, I think, that bite from the orange curacao is still there. There is an, a residual sweetness, and I think it's just because of a combination of a bunch of different citrus flavors all coming together. I think the predominant one is actually the lime, somehow. I don't exactly know why, but it definitely is. There was at least a dash of lime in at least one of those cocktails. Would I recommend it? No, but it's honestly not that worse than the horse's neck, to be perfectly honest. So if I had to give this a rating, the Derby, which I think might be hidden by everything, but alas, the Derby gets a uh, six. I'm into that, but not in the ways that I thought. RIP the yoga blocks. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Dude, it's, it's great. Honestly, knowing that... Um, the best way to keep things upright is to just put shit on yoga blocks. It, it works for me. And yoga blocks, I don't think they're... People are definitely selling them for cheap out there. So I don't need to think about doing anything more expensive. Honestly, if it ain't broke, why are we trying to fix it? Eric says, Man of War is what had the lime. It was the Man of War. And I think the lime really pulls through, oddly enough. And maybe it's because out of all the flavors, that's the least diluted one of them all because all the other cocktails have just been kind of sitting there so it actually kind of does make sense that the man of war flavors are the ones that are most prominent there i'm not getting any anything else though i'm not tasting any vermouth in there to be perfectly honest i'm not tasting much of the fruit components the um the thoroughbred cooler which had the grenadine in it that grenadine flavor is just gone i don't even know what happened to it but it was only a dash and it didn't stick around for a very while indeed and the cooler had one as a garnish if that could help be helping it maybe i don't know Nice garnish, pretty garnish. Disgusting boot, maybe not so disgusting boost. <laughs> and in any case, thank you everybody so much for coming along. This has been The Bar with an X. And I thank you all so much for joining me. This is These are all the cocktails that I have planned for this evening. I, I will be back again next week. It could be one cocktail, it could be a few cocktails. It honestly depends on where we are in my life. I'm trying to do I say I'm trying to do more short-form content on YouTube and on uh, TikTok as well, but nothing's come of that yet, so don't expect anything from me. So long as we expect the bare minimum from me, I will always reach that threshold, and I'm all about pleasing people. Um, but if you liked what you see, cool, that's great. You don't have to act upon that at all. If you don't like what you see, the same thing applies. You don't have to act upon anything. I am not your teacher. However, if you say something and give me feedback, I'm always open to it, but you don't have to. Honestly, it's your choice. And so long as everyone's feeling happy and comfortable and stuff, then that's exactly the kind of vibe that we were trying to go for. Hey everybody, I'm feeling a little hot under the collar, and I think I should probably turn up the air conditioning. It's set to 74 in here, which is usually what I prefer. I'm a hot boy, but I think I need to bring things down a little bit more for next time. Probably 69 degrees on Wednesday nights. In any case, this has been fun. We covered three cocktails tonight. Thank you all for watching. This was The Bar, and I was Cameron. We'll see you all. And another time, we go to the ending screen. I don't know why I was saying goodbye yet. This is the ending screen. Hi, everybody. If you like what you see, I'm, I'm over there. I don't know why I keep saying that. I think this is the most that I've tried to push my content. And I think I just feel I just feel loopy. I didn't sleep very well last night. I had three cocktails. Not all of them, but um, here we are. Um, I plan on going to bed after this. And you should too. It's late. It's like 1030 here. I'm an old man. I have a bedtime. That's how that works. Anyways. Anyways, thank you everybody so much for coming along. If it's the evening where you are and you should be heading to sleep, go to sleep. Have a good night. Have a great evening. If it's the morning where you are and you are waking up to cocktails, good morning. 
Um, but perhaps you shouldn't be drinking alcohol that early in the morning. Again, your choice, not mine. If it's the afternoon, good afternoon. If it's twilight, good twilight, dawn, whatever it might be, no matter what time zone that you're in, cocktail hour was now, and I'll see y'all again next Wednesday evening. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye.